computer. All right. I'm recording. You guys good? All good? All right, let's get started. So um, I, I put together a couple, you know, not necessarily slides, but more or less something to share while we're going through all of this. I think it really helps. I, I tend to be more visual and I like to just show people stuff as rather than just talking, right? So you're gonna see some of that. So I'm gonna show my screen right now. And I'm really just gonna start with a quick story about myself. I mean, some of you guys saw the webinar, maybe, right? Some of you guys read the, the article, some of you probably did not, but it probably makes sense I share who I am and all that. So share my screen. So I want to start with this actually. So I know it's not really product management related, but hear me out. So when I was, you know, young, I actually had dreams of becoming a professional soccer player. That was my dream. And I came from a family of soccer players, right? My dad was a soccer player. My, my dad's uncle, my, my, my uncles really, and my, my, that side of the family were all soccer players. So it was really a lot. I mean, I started playing when I was six years old and I got really good. And I just developed really, really good skills. I made the art league team for my high school at the age of 14. So I was one of the youngest out of all of the actual, you know, players there. But along the way, I hit a certain point in my career, if you will, for soccer, where I started to believe I was an imposter. And I think some of you guys are still background noise. You guys go on mute. Yeah, there's a lot of background noise. I think I can mute you guys. Can I mute? Yeah, Rich, I think you can mute everybody. Let's see. How do I do that? Yeah, if you guys, I can't find it right now. I'll have to find it later. It's in the app. It's you have to go uh, on the bottom of the app where there are the buttons, and then you can mute everyone. Please. Uh, can someone help me out here? So if I go to... Just click on the mic of the person, and you should mute him. Yeah, you can do also oh, on yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it, I see it, okay. So if I go, oh, can I do mute all? Mute participants on entry. All new participants will be muted, okay. Okay, I think we're good now. Yeah, I think so too. All right, good. No, there are people that are not unmuted. Uh, mute. Mute, mute, mute. Wow, that's power. <laughs> I actually never really did that before. <laughs> okay, well, let's get let's get back to the uh, the story here. So you know, I was saying you know I started off uh, with this with this uh, you know this dream of playing professional soccer, and and it was shot down because of this imposter syndrome that I faced. And you know, I actually I, I think I mentioned it in the webinar, but you know, when I was younger, actually, I suffered from dyslexia. And dyslexia, you know, for anyone who doesn't know, is, is, is a learning disability in that you can't read and, and speak and, you know, uh, communicate at the same level as everyone else. And so that really, really messed with my head a lot, messed with my confidence. And with soccer, it was really the only, one of the only places that I felt a little bit more free. But when I got to that level with like all these other, you know, players, I, I started to listen to my, you know, that side of the, of my, my mind, which told me that I wasn't good enough or that, you know, you're not, you know, obviously not smart enough, so you can't play soccer as well. Right. And, and ultimately I, I let that dream of playing soccer professionally escape me. I got to college and, you know, I really made a decision. I was, I told, I told myself like, I, I can't let these voices in my head dictate what my life's gonna be like for the rest of my life. And so it was that the, the, when I turned 18 that I made a conscious decision to just absolutely reinvent myself, right? And it was after that reinvention where I became more you know, charismatic, I became more, you know, I worked a lot of my communication. I just, I became the person that I wanted to be. 
And I, I tell this story because this is, I feel like a lot of us sometimes when we're getting started, we have this, this imposter syndrome of I can't do this or this, you know, there's a fear or whatever. And, and, and just know that, you know, with a, le a level of uh, rewiring or a level of confidence that you can build up in yourself, I'll share some of the taxes that I've done. You get, this, you get to actually, you know, do things that you've never believed you could do. For me, one of those things was product management. And, you know, I actually discovered product management early when I, when I was in college. And it was actually when we were working on this senior design project or a capstone project. And I didn't know it was product management per se, right? Like I wasn't like, you know, the title of product manager or whatever, but ultimately what I was doing is I was acting like a product manager, right? We had a problem, we had to come up with a problem, or we had to come up with a solution to a problem and we had to create something out of nothing. And what we ended up doing was we recreated this, you know, this device, this experience called Seat Finder. We, we as students, we always went to the library and we found it very difficult to find seats in, 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 the, in the library. And so we said, what if we had a way to actually tell us in advance when there was seats available or not? And, you know, that was one of the first projects product management wise that I ever did that really went deep into, you know, user research and feedback and understanding, you know, the pain points and creating something and launching something, right? To the point where we ended up actually winning our computer engineering and electrical engineering award for the best, you know, capstone projects for, for the school. So here's a little video. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna play it or anything, but you know, it highlights that that we actually got featured as one of the, you know, research and entrepreneurship projects, right? So that was really my first, again, introduction, but I really, I didn't go into product management right away. I went and I started, you know, Johnson & Johnson and I, and I started IT. And I decided to do IT because of the fact that it was, you know, there was a lot of opportunity and everything like that. And, and I chose Johnson & Johnson because of the fact that it was, you know, align with my values. And I, I'm going to talk about values in a little bit later, but it's so important to pick a company that aligns with who you are and your values. So for me, my values are health and fitness. At least one of those are, I mean, I mean that's one of the values that I, that I believe in, right? So I chose Johnson & Johnson. I was doing IT, but I, I just, I just didn't really like it. <laughs> you know, there was something about IT that I just didn't really get, but then there was this other thing side of the of the IT world that was building apps and websites and they were solving problems for consumers and I fell in love absolutely fell in love this was the creative lab in in Johnson and Johnson it was almost like an internal agency building apps and websites for for the consumer products and, and other teams and so naturally I, I just gravitated towards that that space and I just I wanted to consume and suck as much and en you know energy and, and and knowledge from the people and so what at, that led to me just kind of working on side projects right I worked on you know even at Johnson & Johnson anything that I could do that was building products or building apps or building websites or whatever solving problems I just gravitated to it right it was pulling me so I worked on uh, recruitment for J&J &J with Carnegie Mellon I worked with TEDx J and J. It was actually the first TEDx style for corporate uh, corporate companies. So I worked there, and I brought a lot of that energy as well. And and also, you know, did some again worked with the Creative Lab in Johnson and Johnson. And you know, that's really when I made a decision that hey, I want to do product management. I want to jump in, and I got to do this because I believe in it, and and I want to do it right but it was really difficult, right? It, it was hard. I had people telling me you can't because you're in IT and all this stuff, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause there because the story continues with how I'm going to answer your questions. And the way I'm going to answer your questions, because a lot of them were related to, you know, I'm very, very similar stories. You guys are either, you know, in a specific role that's not really product management and you just don't know how to get in. Right. So along the way, I'm going to show you what I did. And then, you know, you guys can take some notes and, and take these these strategies and apply them to your to your, you know, what you're doing. OK. All right. So 
another just 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 humanize me a little bit more as well i actually absolutely love traveling and you know i was just so i was so happy to see there were so many people from all the different parts of the world these are a couple of the places that i've been to um you know the stars just i like to every time i go somewhere I like to start it I just remember you know where i've been so you can kind of see us of course but you know for for my folks over in europe and you know in yeah I've mostly been in you know I've spain portugal uh, italy france so you know definitely want to go and visit more i don't have any i know some of you guys are from africa I think there was someone from Nigeria, someone from, um, uh, I can't, I think there's a lot of people from Nigeria, but I don't have any Nigeria stars yet. So <laughs> soon I'll hopefully get there. And then uh, Asia, you know, so for you guys there, you know, I, I, I would love to go. And, and obviously when all this stuff settles down, I'll definitely plan on going again. In Australia, I think we have one person or two people from Australia, I think hopefully joining us. I haven't been there either. So hopefully after this, we can talk and maybe even find ways to communicate and connect. Oh, in South America, I can't forget South America. Uh, just another aside, I'm actually, my parents are from Paraguay. So, um, you know, I've been to Paraguay. I speak Spanish. I speak Guarani, which is the native language of Paraguay. And, uh, you know, I've been to Brazil as well. So I know we have a couple of people from Brazil. I think one or two from Argentina. So that's awesome. And I can't forget, obviously, Canada. I don't, I've never been there. And I don't know if we have anyone from Iceland or anything else. But I just wanted to say, like, you know, I, I truly, again, appreciate you guys being here. I'm really grateful that you're here to learn. Okay. So the first thing I want to share with you guys is what about the Middle East? I have not been to the Middle East. That is a good question. I, I, I plan to go too. I plan to go. I have to. Actually, it's one of my, one of my dreams is to be able to visit you know, all the countries in the world or at least as many as I can, right? Just, I, I, I live by Aristotle's um, quote that, uh, or Plato's quote, sorry, that says, the unexamined life is not worth living. And, you know, with traveling, that is something that, you know, I believe, you know, you should all, we should all try to do. Okay, so how are we doing time? All right, 21, all right. So a lot of questions were asked about, you know, how do I transition and how do I get in into, into the space, right? So actually let me bring up the question, some of the questions. So, you know, again, I've read through all of you guys through questions and I was just, you know, I did a little bit of, you know, come, I did some natural language processing and text analysis back when I was at Disney. And so I, I used this, this little tool to just help me at a glance, just kind of see the similarities and the patterns, right? And so you can kind of see here with a lot of questions related to just, you know, skills and, and transitioning and entrepreneurship, a little, a little bit of entrepreneurship. So this first section I want to tackle is going to be about transitioning, okay? So how do you transition? Well, for me, I, I went through this period of self-discovery, actually, before any of the, you know, resume and any of the other stuff that, you know, had to happen. I actually, I had to figure out who I was, right? I needed to figure out what my story was. And I needed to just start to be grateful for the experience that I've had and try to, you know, put that all together so that people could see that as well. Right. So I'm going to cover a couple of things, story creation, being appreciative habits, how to have developed skills and peers. Right. So um, with self-discovery, right. I, I, I don't know if I, I didn't def, I def, definitely did not coin this, this term, but I believe that everyone should have a story inventory. Okay. And this is a place where you just collect and put down all of the, interesting things in your life, right? Whether it's work related, not work related, failures, epiphanies, and things like that, right? This is, this is essentially your bank of, of stories that will humanize you with other people. It connects you. Because what we have to realize is that, you know, you, when you're interviewing for a company, you're, you're talking to another person, right? And I feel like a lot of us get sometimes 
we get stressed or we get nervous. But we realize, we, what we have to realize is that the, that's another person. It's, it's another human, right? And they have stories and, and you have stories. And if you can connect, you know, your stories with their stories, that's when you have, you know, an actual connection. And that's why I shared a little bit about myself, right? I'm, I'm hopeful that we can have an, a connection, you know, going forward. So I recommend you do this. You create a story inventory. This is actually what I did, right? So when I first started and I tried to jump from, you know, J and J to product management, I kept on getting rejected, rejected, rejected. And it wasn't until my, one of my mentors actually told me, it was like, Hey, why don't you just like take the time to figure out what you want, who you are, right? Like, because I was all over the place. What I realized is that on my resume, I had this and this and that and this, and I could see why people on the other side weren't really registering that I wanted to be a product manager because I had so many different experiences and I wasn't really focused. So what I did is I created kind of like a, just again, a, so you can see here, like I, I've just, and this is just bullets. You don't have to write a novel here, right? You're just taking some time to write some, some bullets of, of things that's happened that you can pull from, you can relate to people, right? So that's what I've done here. And the actual, um, let's see if I have it. Uh, I thought I had it here ready. No, I don't have it ready. Okay. Anyways, I actually created a visual that put together. It was a timeline of all the different things in my life that were related to design and were, and were related to technology. And that's what I use essentially to, to help with getting people to realize that I was capable of, uh, of doing certain things. So that's number one is just figure out yourself, right? Story inventory. And I'll I'll share this as, as a template you can use. Um, but really, I, 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 I kid you not, when you take the time to just write this, you become a bit more aware of yourself, right? Okay, story creation. Another thing to do is, you know, just assess your current state. You know, a lot of us sometimes when we're trying to get somewhere, we're, we're doing the same thing over and over, not really assessing our current state. And so one of the things I love to do is just take assessments now and, you know, here and here and then to just kind of us, you know, almost like in product development, right? What do we do? We usually do retros, right? What do we do? You know, we assess ourselves. Well, how did we, how did, well, how were the last two sprints, right? What did we do? Well, what didn't work? What do we need to improve? Right. And I think we should all be doing this as well in our own lives about just all their areas. So assess your value. Like, what are your values? Like, you know, what, what are, what are your fears? What gets you in the flow state? So there's a lot of assessment you can take just to understand yourself. And once you understand yourself a bit more, you can be, you can actually become a little bit more confident. And when I was in college, this is what I ended up actually doing is like, I took an assessment of myself and I said, wow, I'm a shy and introverted, you know, person. <laughs> and, and I didn't realize it really until like when I assessed myself and I was, I'm afraid of public speaking i'm afraid of of a lot of different things and and now knowing and seeing it it's like okay how do i how do i advance from it how do i get better from it right um here are some of the assessment like actual like i i'm i'm not kidding you that i i've you know i'm not done assessments like uh i've done the 16 personalities as you probably saw from the webinar i've done a couple of the you know disc personalities assessments so this one is pretty interesting it tells you what your fear archetype is so there's a lot and and i'll share with you guys those links and you guys can do it yourself but you know figure out that and then the third thing to do as before you're kind of anything related to your resume or anything like that i believe at least is to understand where you want to go right and i put together this life goals template not too long ago and it's just a way for me to you know create a vision for myself and not just only product and career but also in other areas right so i've kind of established this personal life vision that you know i think we as as people sometimes you know we're so focused on our careers that we forget that there's just there's more to our careers or there's more to life than our than our careers 
And if you have a balance and understanding of these other areas, you will be able to bring that, that energy and that passion into your career. It's just going to come naturally. And so it's really important that you do, you know, I, I believe at least you, you kind of think about this stuff, about your family, about, you know, your finances, and what does that vision look like? Very similar to a product, right? When you're building a product, you ultimately have this vision, this vision of where you want this product to go. And all the energy goes into building that vision, create that vision, and it happens, right? And, and I think that we as people, as, as humans, we should also have that for ourselves. So again, this, this will start to also, when, you, when people ask you questions like, you know, why do you want to do this? This is why you do it, right? You, because you've taken the time to assess what is, my, what is your purpose. For me, I've come to the realization that I think my purpose, I believe my purpose is really to unlock, you know, humanity's superpowers, right? I, you know, this is a little bit of my Disney here, but hear, hear me out. You know, I, I've, I've come a long way in terms of my transition and, or transformation, and I just feel that everyone has these innate gifts that are just sometimes they're blocked by, you know, there are our own mindset. And, you know, for me, it was the, my dyslexia and, and, you know, not being able to get into product management, but overcoming those things, now I, I know how to do that and hopefully I can share and open that up for more people, right? And hopefully have more people be able to let their dreams actually come to reality. So again, we're not even to the resume stuff yet. And like I said, we will get there. Another really good thing is just to build habits, really good habits. And this is a little bit more now product management specific. So, you know, and, and, and really just appreciation. You know, I, this is a tactic that I do every, 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 sometimes almost every morning, but product hunt. I mean, if some of you guys haven't heard of it, definitely recommend you guys to continue, just check them out. It's, it's just a collection of products out there who have been either, you know, upvoted by people or have made it to, to this, you know, almost like the, the front page of products. Right. And, and just take some time, almost like the news, just take some time to check them out right? And see why is it that they're doing so well, right? Why is this product doing so, well? you know, you go in here, you know, look at the, look at the actual product itself and, and just, and just kind of understand like, what is the problem that this thing is trying to solve? And why is it that people really like it? Like, is it the, the, the UI? Is it the experience? Is it, you know, really kind of ask yourself these questions. And then if you find a product that you love, you know, start creating lists. I, I, I believe I'm a huge list taker. I, I make lists. I, I make notes, right? Um, I think, and hopefully you guys are making notes, right? There's a difference between taking notes and making notes. Taking notes, and I, I learned this from Jim Quick, who he's an expert in just like how to learn and all that. But he talks about how when you take notes, you're just writing down what someone else said. When you make notes, you're you're trying to use what they said and you're trying to ask yourself or you're trying to answer, you know, how can I use this, right? How can I use this, this thing? What am I going to do with this new information? Right? So you should be doing both, right? Taking notes and making notes, but that's beside the point. Anyway, so, so making actual lists of, of, of products that you love and, and, you know, just start to just appreciate. And I, and I say the word appreciate because I, I, I mean, this may just be me, but I always just marvel at the the work that product managers and developers and designers and the whole team do with products, right? This is you. These are this is something that you that people created out of nothing, right? And when you can just look and appreciate and like just take a step back and just say, wow, you know, you know, let's say for example. Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, you know, Uber Eats or, you know, some of these, these products that are, are helping us during this pandemic, right? Like I, I, I am so grateful for those products, right? I'm so grateful for the fact that we, that we have people that have created and come up with those products and, and just kind of show and just kind of, you know, again, just appreciate. And, and, and sometimes it for like, I, this is something that I do and I, maybe recommend you guys do it too advice is is take screenshots of of products that you like 
So I'm, this is just my photo, like this is literally my photos right now, my Google photos. But you can kind of see here, like I definitely practice what I'm what I'm sharing here. I I was just trying out the Habita and as a way to kind of build new habits and, and it's a product, right? And I love the idea that they're trying to gamify, you know, good habits and healthy habits and how to, you know, develop healthy habits. So I just took a screenshot and I was like, man, this is cool. You know, I'm going to lock it in my mind for the next time that if I ever, you know, I'm trying to hum, have a creative brainstorming session, like this is what I'll maybe tap into, right? Just, just start creating or just taking screenshots of, of things out there in the world that you really love and, and, and organize it, right? Maybe say like, these are the really cool, you know, user onboard flows, or these are the cool, you know, whatever. Just start to appreciate product a little bit more, right? Okay, and, and we'll go into a couple more. So this goes a little bit into the, into the actual uh, list that I, that I mentioned, right? As you're reading stuff, always, I mean, I love to use Pocket. I don't know if you guys use it as well, but I'm a huge just Pocket, Pocketer, I guess. I don't know what they're called. But anytime I find an article and I like it, I tag it. Right. And so I have a bunch of really, like, I think a couple of you guys asked, like, what are some really good resources and what are some good, you know, I'll share, I, I actually, I, I generated, I'm, I'm really into data scraping. And so I've learned how to do that. So I, I, I can send you guys what this output is in like a, you know, spreadsheet or whatever. So you guys can see like the actual links and the tags, but these are just some of my favorite product resources. I have tags for, you know, analytics. I think some of you guys were asking about analytics, right? Um, and, you know, I just have a bunch of different tags. So I'll, I'll be happy to share that with you guys. So that way you have, again, resources and things like that. But I think, again, we use this more as, as a way to just start to appreciate things, right? Okay. Um, we're good with this. Okay. So that literally is just self-discovery. So hopefully that was helpful that you can now figure, okay, now I know myself. Now what? Okay. Next is to get in the door. <laughs> How do I get in the door? Right. This is probably the big, big question that everyone's asking. All right. So again, it goes back to the storytelling and transitioning. And I think a lot of you ask like, what's you know, how do I present myself to someone, right? Like, how does someone even notice me? How does someone actually, you know, how do I stand out? I've done some interviews, but I just can't get past the interviews, right? So when I mean like getting the door, I mean like you're literally got the, the job and you're getting the door. So some of the things that for, 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 for me that has helped me are just the storytelling techniques and the power of story. So if you guys aren't working on how to tell a really compelling story, definitely recommend that as being one of the key areas to improve on, right? Because here's why. When you're a product manager, and this is in my experience, right? When you're a product manager, it's your responsibility to be like the glue, right? To communicate, to connect, to get everyone aligned on this common vision. And if you can't communicate well to your developers, to your designers, to your marketing team, right? If you don't speak their language, it becomes very difficult to get and push people, right? Or pull people towards that common vision. And so how do people do this? Well, they do it through effective storytelling right i mean there's a reason why you know you know steve jobs right there's so many people were just you know enamored by him because of his ability to communicate and get you to believe the vision that he was doing and you know some would say you know he, he was you know doing it and you know pushing his, his his employees to do it but in a way, people believed him and they wanted to do it. They wanted to make this beautiful thing. And I think that's one of this, those, those core skills that we don't focus as much on in, in, in product management is just your storytelling ability. So I created, uh, you know, I curated a list of some of my favorite, you know, story, the power of, like people talking about the power of story and how, how to actually be more effective in your speaking. Uh, I also have, I think it's a great way to learn from other people. Just, just again, appreciate, take, understand how they're doing it and, and, 
kind of understand, you know, how is it that they're making me feel this way, right? Because what you'll notice is that effective communicators are the ones who can get you to go on a roller coaster of emotions, right? They can, they can make you feel the problem so much that you have that problem now. And then they can make you feel that you're actually solving the solution. You're actually making progress towards it, right? And, and I think that that's, that's true with a lot of these things, right? A lot of these, these this lists. Okay. Another thing that I, I, I preach a lot about is the idea of product audits and creating a, a way to, you know, showcase your actual skills. Cause that's, that's one of the things. So let's say you check the box. Maybe you 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 spend all this time, you're an effective communicator, right? You can wow people. You can, you know, they're all impressed by you, but now can you do the job? Right. And that's the second piece, the skills. Like, do you have what it takes? Can you, and I think a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll send their resume and they'll just wait and they never really show that they can do the job. Even if you have the skills, they, people don't give you a shot. They don't give you a chance. I, I think you, we should all just as curious people be creating these product audits or we should be aspiring to, you know, uh, help the company. That's really what you are doing. You're, you're, you're imagining that you are a product manager. Right. Imagine you're a product manager. Let's say you want to work for, uh, I, I say Hulu or Disney or whoever, right? Let's say you want to work for Disney. Imagine that you are a product manager right now at Disney. What would you do? Right. What product would you improve? What and why? Right. And so is it a little product audit that I did for, you know, this was a friend of mine, his, he has a charity and I wanted to help him, right? I wanted to connect with him a little bit more. So I did a product audit. Do so I do it, you know, technology check, you know, I was looking at his search engine optimization, gave some recommendations and stuff like that. So this is a way to, you know, show that you have some of those skills in product management. And it's also a way to give back, right? give value. I always believe that it's important to give value as opposed to just like requesting and waiting for, you know, something to be given to you, give value. You never know how that person will, will end up returning the favor. Right? So that's the product audit. It, it goes into a couple of different things in a way I did a product audit and this is how this is one of the second things I did to get into my first product manager role is that I, I essentially, I created a functional requirements document. I, I don't know if a lot of companies are, you know, asking for this now, but it, I actually don't, I think it, it doesn't hurt to just like include it as part of your, as part of your resume, almost like a separate thing is just show people that you know how to, you know, create, you know, requirements documents, right. Depending on your level. Right. But a lot of you guys, if you, if that's what you're going to be doing your intro into it, show people you can do the, the role, the job, right? So this is the one I, I actually use to do it, right? So here is a site. I broke it down into the different components. I said, I, again, I'm very visual. And I think, I think if you can be visual, it shows that you can communicate well to the other person, right? So you can see here, I broke it up into different modules. I said the modules have different components. And I said, okay, here's what I would do from a functional requirement standpoint, right? What's the, you know, the, the user story, the goal or the need, whatever you want to call it. This was back when I, again, I wasn't really good at product, uh, at user story creation. I just, I, you know, I just kind of try to put something together and, and I have this whole functional requirements that I, that I shared to, to, you know, the hiring manager that ended up getting me the job, right? That this along with my story, right? So that is the product audit and something that you guys, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you guys do. This will make you stand out. I tell you that not a lot of people are doing this. And if you do it, you will instantly stand out and you can come to the, you know, company from a place of, of gratitude, right? If anything, you could even say like, if you love, if you really want to work for this company, you love the company, you know, it, it, it's a way for you to give back to that company to say, okay, even if I'm not a product manager, at least I'm, I'm trying to help you, right? Make this, this site better as an example. Hey, okay. Rich, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, can we pick anything as a 
to like create a functional uh, requ- requirement document or is it for the company you're applying to? So good question. I, I, I actually think it's good to have a, you know, a, a variation of these product audits, right? I'll actually, I'll go live here and I, and I'll show you that I have multiple product audits for, I'm not in, these are not companies that I'm working for. Right. Um, but I've done product audits for, for other people. Right. Actually, I've used the creation of a product audit to to meet people. Right. So I'm a huge Jay Shetty fan. Anyone else a Jay Shetty fan? I can't see you guys, but you guys are. You know, I I audited Jay Shetty's website. I was like, you know what? I want to meet Jay Shetty. So I'm going to do a product audit and I'm going to recommend things to make it better. Right. And, and if anything, you know, even if I don't meet him, I, at least I know that I've helped him, right? So, and I actually understood his website a little bit better. And, and so, you know, I did, you know, I, you can see here my technology check, Google check. You know, the, the funny thing is like the broken links check. This is actually one of those funds that like people don't really take the time to link, look at their broken links, but there's a lot. And if you can help people with just even broken links is beyond far. So to answer your question, yes, I think it's important. I think you can do for the company for sure that you're applying for. And, and I mean, it doesn't hurt to have others to get you to build up that experience. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay, cool. So what else we got? So I said product audit, okay. Resume and interviews last, last point. So for for me, I have always believed, I mean, LinkedIn is your best friend, right? You got to use, if you're, especially if you're trying to transition, use LinkedIn like it's your best friend in terms of, you know, always updating it, always, you know, in, feed it and, and, and add to it, right? The reason how I got my job actually at Disney was because of a recruiter who saw my LinkedIn, right? So this is a true story right here. So Erin, she is a a recruiter at Disney. She, you know, this was when I was already at the digital agency, but she reached out, she reaches out to me on LinkedIn and said, I came across your profile. It looks good. I want to interview you. Right. And I was like beyond, I mean, Disney for me was a dream, dream job. Right. I, my wife actually, the reason why we moved to Florida was because my wife had a job at Disney and I was so jealous that I, I couldn't get a job at Disney. And I was like, if I could only get a job at Disney and be a product manager, oh my God, my life would be complete. (laughs) Right. And, and so I'm doing my world, I'm, you know, I work in in this digital agency and, and then here comes a recruiter, right. Cause I'm in Florida now in Orlando. And I mean, but also my LinkedIn was up to date, right? I was, I was using, and this is actually before, uh, I didn't mention this. I, I did want to work for Disney. I looked at a lot of job descriptions, uh, that Disney offered in terms of their roles for product managers. And I used a lot of the keywords that, that the job description has, right? And here's actually the tool that I use and I recommend you guys to use as well. It's job scan. What this will do is it will look at your resume or your LinkedIn and assess it against a job description. And it'll give you a score of how, how well of a match you would be. Because at the end of the day, we live in a world where if you send your resume and it does not have the keywords, you're going to get sifted through and you're going to get out, right? I recommend you use the words that the job description has. But if you're going to put it on, if you're going to put them on your job, on your resume, please, please, please at least make the conscious effort to learn that thing that you're going to put on your resume. So like, like, for example, if it asks for Google analytics and you have no Google analytics, go learn Google analytics, go try to do a project that has Google analytics and then put it on your resume, right? Because that is a way that you will be matched a little bit better. So anyway, so go back to my story you know, Aaron reaches out to me and I'm like, Oh my God, yes, I want to meet you. Like, can we, can we meet and we talk? And I'm taking now the experience from product from, from Lightmaker. I'm taking, you know, those skills and everything. I'm also taking the experience and the, and the knowledge that I've gained as a storyteller. 
right? And I'm bringing that to this conversation. And, and I, tell, I kid you not, I came with so much energy and passion that Erin, she was like, oh my gosh, we have to get you a job at Disney, right? She was my advocate. She was my champion. <laughs> and I was like, yes, like, please, can we, how do we do this, right? So I, you know, I'm reaching out to her and just wanted to say thank you. And, you know, I, I wanted some feedback and they said, you know, I'm sorry, this one didn't work out, right? So basically rejection. <sighs> okay, so I say thank you, it's, you know, I understand, whatever. And next thing you know, I get another response from Aaron and on LinkedIn, right? saying that you know there's a job in california i think or there's, a, there's another job opportunity and she's like can you send me an updated resume i'm like yes please I'll, I'll do whatever you want i really want this job and and i end up you know sending everything and i follow up with her and she says i haven't received feedback yet and then she gives me the news sorry for the delay but it's been you know your, your, your experience is too light to be considered for a senior role so again rejected number two then after the holiday, she reaches out again, right? And this is like, again, the third time a recruiter, right? A recruiter, I'm not, even, I'm not even actively asking her. This is, she's, you know, basically helping me. She's like, hey, there's another opportunity in Orlando, you know, send me the re you know, resume, all that stuff. And I did. And I kid you not that this was the one, right, that I ended up landing. And I was so grateful to Erin because, you know, she helped me essentially, you know, I didn't actually actively look for these roles. She looked for them for me. But the point I'm trying to make is that, you know, if you keep your LinkedIn up to date and you're using the keywords and you're also, you know, you, if you've made those connect, that actual connection with someone, you know, you come prepared, right? You come with the alignment of your values that you did in your self-discovery and the align and, and aligning that with the values of the company. And that's what I did. I, I remember when I shared my story with Aaron, I basically talked about how, you know, how I loved entertainment and I loved the idea of Disney ever since I was young. And I brought the story of when I was younger, when I went to the parks for the first time and, you know, there was an emotion connection. And that's a really important thing that I think a lot of people don't do is just, they just don't have that connection with people. And so have that connection. It'll, 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 it'll work. It, it will take you so far, even if not even just in your career, but just in life, right? Okay, that's resumes, that's, that's slightly interviews. I'll go into a little bit more and then networking. So with the- Lord, Sorry, sorry for bringing you back, sorry. Yeah. yeah, I just want to find out, when you were doing um, uh, the documents you shared with us to demonstrate how you did um, your product discovery, was it um, uh, this link that you used to, to, di to do the product discovery? Breaking, broken links dot um, com right uh, yes so the one that the broken broken link check okay okay broken link link check dot com yeah so all you need to do when doing that is just to post the URL of the website you're trying to audit right yep and it's a free tool I mean they do limit you to I think a hundred thousand links but I mean who's gonna look at a hundred thousand is it ten thousand or a hundred thousand I don't know how many but even if you find one, right? Like you're 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 helping the the company, <laughs> you know. I think what you're what you're ultimately trying to do is you're trying to again imagine that you are a product manager and you're trying to help make the product better, right? Whether that's you know I've seen and this is actually I actually I've never tried this before in a way. So maybe you guys try this and you let me know. But why don't you try to actually you know get user feedback? from people using the product, right? Maybe right. if you're a user, then great. But if you are not a user, go, go talk to those people, right? Understand what are their pain points, right? What are the, what are the steps they're doing right now? And, and how is that product helping them? And what could be done better, right? Just imagine yourself as a product manager right now. And, and that's an area you can improve. All right, thank you. Yeah. Cool. So interviews, one last thing on interviews. And, and this is, I think, just the secret sauce of interviewing and networking. And that's really the personality that you bring to the table, 
right? And I, I feel like a lot of people sometimes they come to an interview and they, they, they forget that it's a conversation, right? Uh, well, I should say people just expect it to be a conversation, uh, to be, you know, one person asking and that's it. I, I always believe that interviewing and should be more of a conversation. It should be a, you know, give and take, right? And if you're ever going to do a phone interview, you know, definitely uh, try to share things, right, in advance, right? Because I know when, like, right now we have the luxury of being able to do a video share. And this is beautiful. You guys are seeing what I'm seeing, and this is great. But if, let's say, you can, you're doing a phone call, right, and try to send something else, right? Do, do send something else that they can look at, at least get them interested, right? And then once you're in the actual, let's say, um, I, I actually, I didn't share this story. So when I got to Disney and I did the onsite interview, I came ready to just share, right? I had an iPad. I had, it's, this is kind of like the portfolio idea, right? That you build a portfolio of all these different things, whether it's your screenshot that you've taken or the product audit or the functional requirements or your previous projects, just, you know, show people, right? I think people just talk too much <laughs> and talking is great. And, and you know, that's how we communicate. But if you can show someone, there's a little bit more credibility, right? Like me showing you that I've done a product audit, right? I'm hopeful that you guys now believe that I've, you know, done it before. And I, I'm hopeful that you can see that I, I do these things for a lot of different people, right? These are people that I want to meet. These are in the per per personal development world. And, and I'll go into one. I mean, I'm, I'm not kidding when I say I do these things, <laughs> right? Like there's credibility. There's, there's, you, you, you know, so show people that you've done the, the work and, and then the rest of the half, is is you know coming with that personality and and if it's not a fit then it's not a fit right um sorry, sorry. to interrupt but yeah. uh how you have uh, done the google index check and google brand search thing on the product uh, audit can you say it one more time uh sure uh can yeah how have you checked the google index check and google brand search so what I do is yeah. I basically for Google index. I, all I want, all I really want to know is just, you know, how, how many pages do they have? Right. So this is a, a, a query of site colon and then the name of, of the URL. And this just gives me an idea of like how many pages are indexed. Right. And uh, I, I can see how large the site is. Right. And you can actually, this is one of the play, like, you know, password, like you shouldn't have to show this link probably. Like that probably shouldn't be there, right? I'm assuming, but I don't know. So it's just a good way to see what Google is actually crawling and showing you. So it, the, this indexing is about the Google SEO, right? Yeah, it's, 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 well, it's, it's mostly used as, a, like I said, it's, it's used as a way to understand that website's presence on, on Google. Yes. Google, right. it could, okay. Yeah. It could be it could be seen as like an SEO tactic or strategy. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And how about the Google brand search? So with Google brands, uh, honestly, it's just like I do a search query on the name of the brand, right? And I'm okay, just right. very curious to see what comes back. So like for for Jay Shetty, let's see, you know, I just put his name, Jay Shetty, right? And yeah. This was his like Google, you know, results. So I can see, okay, he's got a knowledge, he's got a knowledge card. He's got his his website as number one. He's got some, you know, question queries here. Uh, he, you know, so he's he's got some good good search presence. Presence, yeah, okay. Thanks. Uh, one more question, Rich. Are you only limited to the, to the website, or what about if you want to evaluate a mobile app? Yeah, no, it's definitely applicable to app. So with app. I would say the same the same tactics. I, some some of these won't be applicable, but another another really cool you know tool that I like to use as part of my competitive analysis. If you guys don't know about, it, is Similar Web. Similar Web does a it's great job for assessing you know the uh, an analytics of a tool. So let's say there's a Hulu. Uh, actually, that's a bad example. Let's do Netflix. Where's the app? 
there is a paid version. I, I haven't used the paid version. So some of the data might be, you know, uh, behind that paid version firewall or whatever gate. But there's another way to get like insights, right? And, uh, you know, for, again, the product audit is, is mostly used as a way for you to just deconstruct the product. You know, when I was younger, I, I loved to take apart, you know, computers and electronics just out of curiosity of, of what is in it, right? And I think that's what we also as product managers need to bring is a little bit of that curiosity, right? I, I, I'm, I kid you not when I, I, I have a couple of these Chrome, you can see I have a lot of Chrome extensions. I can send you some of those lists as well. But one of the things I love to do is anytime I get to a site, uh, I love to look at like, how is that site being built, right? Like what is, what is powering this site? I use a couple of different tools. One, there's this Chrome extension called Wappalizer. It just tells me, you know, what is the technology that's powering it? And this is where I, yeah, this is where I learn a lot of new, new technologies that I've never heard before, right? Um, thankfully, I've heard of all of this, which is good. But let's say you've never heard of Telium, right? And you're like, what is Telium, right? And this takes you into this rabbit hole of knowing more about that product. Um, and I'm sure there's different ways to find this stuff out for, for apps as well. You just got to go find it, right? Uh, and then another one is the in, that I included in the product audit is the technology check, which comes from Built With. So Built With is a tool that same thing. It just looks at the code and grabs everything it knows about it, and it shows it to you in a detailed format. And you know you can actually see what were previously on, what was previously on there, what is now on there. You know it's actually pretty wild that all this stuff is there. So you just learn more about the, the product. So break it apart, right? Break it apart and just know what it's in there. And then, you know, how do you make it better? How do you make it better for, for the people? Hi, uh, Rich. Yeah. Yeah, this is Mirta. So uh, um, my question is, do you also include some proposals for the areas of improvement? For example, yes. it's a headline. Yeah? You, yes. Okay. Yes, I think it's, you know, remember you are a product manager right? And you, as a product manager, you want to help the company succeed, right? So you should know what are the, what's, what are the, what's the mission, what's the vision, all that stuff. You should know all of that stuff about the company and, and, and how are you going to help the company succeed? Like, what are you going to do, right? What are recommendations? What are improvement areas, right? I, and this, I guess this is a good segue into once you, once you're in, right? How do you, how do you actually jumpstart yourself? So some of the techniques that I like to use are things like uh, the jobs to be done theory. Um, hopefully you guys have heard of it. If you haven't, I will bring up the company that I worked with at Disney, uh, jobs to be done, Thrive. So yeah, jobs to be done is this idea that there are really is just the, the purpose of our product is to solve or is to answer, you know complete a job and the, the 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 companies or the products that can actually you know address a specific can, can address the different steps in the in this in the process better than the competitors then you actually can beat like let's say for example you can actually beat apple and google right at doing some things at by just by assessing what are the steps that a person has to take right now, right? It doesn't matter if you're old or young or, you know, this country that like everyone has to do the same type of thing in order to achieve something. So what are all the steps like, and then outline all the steps and then say, okay, what, what can I do? How can I make this, how can I make this process better, much faster and more accurate, right? That's why, you know, the iPod, was you know became more successful than the the uh, CD players and stuff at that time, right? Because they made the experience of getting music much faster, much much easier, and obviously you could say it also, you know, much more appealing <laughs> than what was uh, existing in the market. So definitely recommend you guys take a look at Thrive and Jobs to Be Done is a is a great framework that I always apply to everything, right? It's just how many steps. Do you, does it take to get from one thing to another 
right? List those out. How accurate, how, how, you know, how easy is it to get from, to do that? That's your accuracy. And then what are other competitors out there that are trying to do it? And then how can you do it better, more, how can you do it faster, right? So essentially what you're doing is you're, you're comparing, you're comparing the steps that it takes for a person to do it for one product or one experience. And then the, the number of steps in another experience. And if you can minimize it for, you know, better than, than all of it, then you will have a better product, right? This is, this is the framework I, you know, definitely recommend. Okay. Um, uh, so it's a bit sorry to interrupt, but I have one question. Uh, sometimes you, uh, you find uh, something that you uh, find a new category and want uh, to make uh, a product for that market, right? Or for that a new category. So how would you like go for it? Whether you do a qualitative research or a quantitative one or some, how would you like go for it? How would you determine whether one is worth going for versus not going? Is that what you said? Yeah, 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 somehow. Yeah, so it, it depends. I think it really depends because this is, and I won't go to, uh, we're almost, you know, we're nine, almost 9.30, but there is, a, there is a way to assess the need for one yeah. versus the other, right? Jobs to be done, what, and what they do is you, you basically are trying to, uh, in a very a qualitative way, you're trying to sometimes get like user feedback to assess what is more needed than, than not, right? Because let's say you, you're, yeah, you're, you're, you're minimizing the steps, but there's no need. <laughs> then it's like, well, then you're going to have a product that no one wants or no one can actually benefit from, right? Um, let's, let's, let me go through the rest and then answer that a little bit more because I do want to just finish up the rest. Is that okay? Okay. So sure. now that you've gotten the job and you're in, right, how do you start? And I think there's some of this for, for you guys who are in and want to stand out or you want to just like, you hit the ground running and you're, you know, just what's, what's that look like? So I mentioned this in the webinar, I'm, I'm going to elaborate a little bit more, but I believe it comes down to people, priorities, product, and process. You know, when I started Disney and I, I ultimately had this aspiration of actually being a director, right? And I was like, man, I, I'm a product man, you know, I, I got years in my belt now in product management and I want to be a director. And so I put together a 30, 60, 90 day plan of, you know, basically what I want to achieve in 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. And then what do I want to achieve in the next year, two years, et cetera. Very similar to like that life vision, life goals template, right? And that really helped me to stay focused on, on some of the things, right? It also helped me to stay focused on the people I needed to meet at the company, right? So if I wanted to be a director, then I needed to, you know, surround myself with directors and, and VPs and, so, you know, those types of folks. I needed to know what are their priorities, right? I needed to know what's the company's priorities. And I also needed to understand the product and the process, right? Because that way, if you understand the product and you understand the process, you become more <clears throat> uh, valuable, right? So a couple things that I want to show with this one. Let's see if I had it ready too. I had a couple of these ready and I think I jumped around. So forgive me. Uh, I'll kind of jump into the next one, which is also in a way, this is like when you're in the company and you want to leave an impact, you want to stand out. They're kind of both the same. So this, this works perfectly, but you know, I always believe that when you're starting off, it's, it's imperative that you understand the, you know, the priorities of the company, because when you understand the priorities of the company, you can make decisions that are very aligned with that, with that vision. So, you know, when I was at Disney, I, I basically managed a team of the product managers there, specifically in the world of search and conversation. And what I ended up doing for the team was I wanted to have them, you know, see a, a common vision. And that common vision for us was to perfectly match families and fans around the world to enjoyable Disney experiences and destinations, right? And you can kind of see here, like how do, how does, 
you know, how do we fit in the, the, the bigger visions of the company, right? There's the company vision. Sometimes there's like a, you know, segment vision. Then there's like a team, like, you know, sub segment. And so I wanted to like showcase that. And I think it's important that you know where you fall into the bigger picture, right? Another thing that I think is really important and that you do when you're starting off is to um, essentially yeah, establish that strategy, right? And so strategy for me has always been something that I never really knew, like, what is strategy? Like, how do you define it? What do you do? At the end of the day, the way I see strategy is it's, it's your approach, right? It's the approach that is going to get you to, you know, to that vision, right? It's, it's the techniques and the tactics that's going to get you there. And so for us, in order to, you know, get to this perfectly matching the vision or perfectly matching families and friends, we were going to use our, our digital portfolio of search and conversation to do that. Right. So this is kind of like, you know, a style of communicating the strategy and, the, and you know, what we were going to do for the year. Right. And, you know, this is a way you can, you can do it as well. It helps to align, you know, these are why these were the core products that we were focused on and what is the goal? What is the purpose of that? And then there's also specific, you know, metrics and, and data that relate, relate to it. And I did show that here just out of respect to the company. And, you know, at the end of the day, I put this deck together as a way to highlight to, to everyone really what then communicate to anyone in the company, how, how we are doing what we're doing. Right. So this is where we get into, you know, our principles of quality, speed and accuracy. And what is that doing? Well, it's driving conversions, right? This is where we're building a roadmap and saying, okay, what are we achieving for the different quarters? And then also how are we all, how are we aligning towards the, key objectives of the company right because if you don't have the key objectives of the company or if you don't have the actual like metrics that that you're striving for then then you gotta go get it <laughs> like there's like that's plain and simple get it from the ceo get it from whoever but you got to know what is it that you're focused and what is your target have targets and and really assess how are your products going to you know how are you going to align with that with that um with that, those goals and those targets, right? By the quarter level, right? And this is, this again, this is the, the, strat, the, the technique that I, that I did at Disney that really helped because, you know, now anytime I talk to someone, they knew exactly what, you know, what it is that we were doing. They knew exactly, you know, what, when we're doing it and then, you know, how we're measuring success. Another really, good tactic to get all this measurements and, and, you know, KPIs and, and things like that is, you know, when I, when I was at Lightmaker, I created a lot of these measurement plans. And I think a measurement plan is really that key thing in the beginning of the, com of the product development that sometimes we forget. We, sometimes we do it at the end, but I think it's important that you do it, figure it out in the beginning. Again, this goes back to what is the objective? What is the strategy? What are the goals that you're trying to achieve? Right. And then how are you going to measure success? What are the KPIs? So this is a, I, actually, I think this is like a, a style that Google Analytics Academy recommends that you guys, you know, you guys try out or do. It helps to organize really, you know, every single goal by KPIs. My name is Gajibola. Oh. I think I heard, I think I heard someone. Was that a, yeah, that was a mute. I need to mute. Hello, Rich. Hey, yes. Sorry, I don't know. Is there a way you can help with all this document, uh, like this template, to help us come up with our own that can help us to, you know, to 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 help what we're currently doing right now? I don't know if there's a way you could help us. You could share this document with us that you are using to explain to us. Yeah, yeah. No, I'll I'll be sharing <clears throat> some of these so that way you guys can. Using as templates. That's really what I'm trying to do is I want you guys to have a head start, right? You know, I, I'm just so, uh, you know, grateful you guys decided to come here and listen and, you know, hear, hear me out that I, what I want to do is I want to give you guys so much value that you're going to use it and you're going to say, man, this rich guy, he knew what he was talking about. I want to keep coming back. I want to, I want to learn from him some more, right? So that's really what I, I this is just scratching the surface. There's just so much more with product development and you know stakeholder management and you know personal development that i am all about 
that this is kind of my, again, my intro into it. So yeah, I'll share it, don't worry. Oh, let's look at some of these comments actually. So, okay, a lot of people asking, could you share the sample templates? Product audit is awesome. Sweet, is it possible for you to share the playlist? Yes, one more reason why I use Pocket that you are simply listening. Yeah, yeah, you actually, I like that too, that you can actually listen to those. Awesome, plus one, okay. A lot of people like the product audit, cool. So super helpful. Can you share the list of articles? Yep, I'll definitely share the list of articles. Super helpful, valuable, awesome. I, I am so, so happy that you guys are, I, and I've been talking a lot and normally I like to like listen and, and get back feedback and you know, I just, because of the format, there's so many people, I figured I just, I just try to, you know, answer all those questions in group chunks as opposed to going individually one by one by one. I, I, naturally, I wouldn't want to do that. I want to like just talk to you, be like, what is your question? How do I answer it? Again, for the sake of time, I just figured I'd group everything together and, and go from there. So um, I saw the PM art interview article, mind map on your pocket. Yeah, I'll send, I'll send everything. Don't worry. I'll, I'll send you guys everything that I got. Okay. The last bit is again, leaving an impact because and this goes back to the beginning, the very, very beginning, right? When you started off your self-discovery and you know, the value, the purpose, what are you trying to do? I find that I've been so, let me go get rid of this again. Let's get out of here. Okay, cool. I have found that, let me go to my Stop sharing so I can, sh okay, there we go. I have found that being able to actually work towards a, a vision or a purpose that you believe in, you just start to, you know, learn at an expon exponential rate, right? You just start to, you know, make connections with people because you truly, truly believe it. And I think that comes with, again, knowing yourself and understanding and connecting with the value of the company. You know, I, like I said, I chose Johnson & Johnson because of the value that it connected with my uh, health and fitness. I chose Disney because of the fact that I wanted to really, you know, bring the, the excitement and, and, and happiness that I know Disney can bring in film, but I also wanted to bring that through the products. I wanted to gain that experience. And now uh, being an Instride, which is a ned tech startup, you know, here in LA, it's all about education and it's all about how can we, you know, help people realize their human potential and, and have companies, you know, essentially also realize that and, 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 and offer to pay for, for their employees, right? It all starts with people. That's basically like our, our tagline with Instride. So going back into, I, I, I just wanted to share that. So let me go back into the sharing the screen and leaving an impact. And that's really what I'm trying to do right now, right? I'm trying to leave an impact on you guys. I'm trying to leave an impact in the education world <clears throat> because, you know, growing up, again, struggled a lot with reading, a lot, of, a lot of with schooling, actually. And if I only knew all this stuff when I was younger, I feel like I, you know, I probably, you know, wouldn't have had so many challenges. So that's what I'm offering to you guys. All right. Last thing is own your path. And this is, this is for those who, you know, want to essentially be an entrepreneur or they want to just have the freedom to create whatever it is that they want to create, what they want to wrong, whatever wrong it is that they want to, you know, whatever they want to fix, whatever wrong is out there. And you can do that with your product management skills, right? I'm, I'm so, I'm so fortunate that I can say that I, you know, I started, you know, in the entrepreneurial world not too long ago and have been able to succeed fairly quickly because of the experience that I gained in product management, right? You know, just an example, I, I, da -da -da. I started this site, I wanted to have a way to, you know, I, my, my, my wife and I, we like to travel, as we mentioned, we have two dogs and 
I wanted to create a place, uh, a guide essentially for anyone who has dogs and wants to travel, but just doesn't know how to do it or, you know, is, you know, uncertain about it. And, you know, I created the site and right now it's just, it's, it's a way to just explore and, and, and have fun with something on the side, but it ends, actually ended up being a profit passively generating profit for me through, you know, the affiliate uh, program that I'm in with Amazon. So it just goes to show you that, you know, develop these skills, right? It's a little scary at first because you're just like, Oh, it's a whole new world. You don't know it. But if you reflect and you say, okay, what is it that I, my product management skills have trained me on? Well, it's to know what is the problem. It's to know the, the people, right? It's to know how to do market research. It's to know, you know, how to identify solutions. It's all these things. And when you can do that, you can actually then realize that you can create something of your own, of your own kind and, you know, innovate in a, in a world that needs innovation. I think, especially now more than ever, there's just, we're, it's so ripe for innovation for, for all these different things. And, you know, being able to take five management skills, it's, it, it is truly the best way. Right. Um, now, I had one more thing I wanted to share. Oh, I forgot this. This is another thing. Here's my 30, 60, 90 day plan. I can share this as well. But this is one that I, I did when I started in Stride. Just goes to show you, again, how I, I, I preach or I, I do what I preach or whatever the saying is. I, you know, I started, I put together, okay, what do I want to do in the first 30 days? Okay, I want to, there he is. Learn the people, the, the, the purpose, the people, the product and the priorities, right? And I set target goals for myself. I said, I want to ramp up, you know, in all the areas as fast as possible. I want to establish hundred percent trust and credibility, right? And I want to find answers. Like, so I kid you not when I say like, when you put these things down, you're, you start to pull yourself towards doing those things, right? So that's one thing. I think another, there was another question about process. Like what, what's the product development process? I follow this process. I mean, it's the same for everyone, but I just like the visual for this. This was something that we created when we were at Playmaker at the digital agency. It was a really nice way to show people what the process was from, you know, like, you know, an idea to launch, right? Very simple circles, right? You can see there's strategy, UX, user, user testing, there's content, design, front end, back end, testing, and launch. But then when you look at it like this and you're like this, the colors and the size is, is, you know, the differentiating factor of it, right? You can kind of see all oh, development takes a lot of peace, but also you need strategy. And then I just love this, this, this diagram. And it's just a great way to, you know, follow a really good process that works, right? You do discovery, you create some prototypes, you get people to believe it, buy into it. You know, you do some usability studies, you, you, you know, you get it, you get that, thing in front of people, you prototype, you understand, you assess, you iterate, right? Don't build anything until you actually have good, you know, confidence that this is going to work. And then you keep moving forward with development, right? And then obviously launch. So another, another just thing I wanted to share. Um, all right, I'm going to close some tabs here because I'm, that way I can remember what I've shown and what I've not shown. So I've shown this. Any questions as, as, I'm, as I'm closing stuff, just so that I can answer your questions. Okay, I did this one already. Okay, we got some chats in here. Yeah, um, Rich. Yeah. Um, so I have a question about attending um, boot camp yeah. for product management, right? So I personally have self-studied on uh, Udemy, some, uh, uh, you know, some courses about product management for digital sure. products. So, and I have also followed other ex exercises, et cetera. So I was wondering like, is it enough for self-studying or I do need to attend a boot camp for a faster track? Right, so I would ask you to help me understand. Yeah. What is your background with just technology and, 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 and all that stuff like, you know, so how much experience do you have, you know, building products? I'm assuming none, right? None. And I come from consumer goods. Okay. 
And, yeah. and the reason why you were thinking about doing the boot camp is because you want to just kind of, you know, accelerate and get as much possible knowledge with it, right? Yeah, and I have heard a lot of uh, friends of mine, they managed to enter into uh, the PM uh, uh, career path. They, they mentioned like, okay, you do need to have a, you do need to attend the boot camp. That is a faster track. Yeah. So I think it's more about the timing here. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I, I, I think it all depends, uh, you know, because yeah. boot camps are, I love, I love the, I love boot camps. I've done a couple of boot camps myself, right? It's a great way to just get as much information as possible and, and, you know, in a structured way. Because a lot of yeah. times in school, what it does is it gives you structure, right? It, you don't have to rely on yourself to do it, right? You have a, someone giving you a curriculum. That's kind of like working out. Like I, I love working out. And the reason why it's difficult sometimes is because you don't have your own workout schedule or plan, right? You, if you get a trainer, they give it to you and it's easier. So in that regard is, yes, if you, if you want someone to just like give you a structure of how to, you know, get to where you want to go then I recommend it, right? Is it that, is it, you know, will, will I say that I'm only looking for people with boot camp and experience? That, that's not true for me at least, right? So that's where I feel like you have to weigh, you know, what is it that you want to achieve? Do you want to have just an immersive experience and learn, you know, very quickly in a structured way? Or do you want to, you know, figure it out on your own? Or do you want to create projects for the people, right? Like that's really, I think, the way you should base it. And, yeah. and you know, yeah, boot camps are a good way to do that for sure. I yeah. mean, anytime you can learn, but also anytime you can practice, I think that's the key. Because let's say you just took a boot camp and, and you don't have the, the, the practice, right? The appreciation and all those other things I shared, you know, it, you're going to... It's gonna, you, you, it's gonna get hard, right? But the more you practice, just it's almost like a habit. If you be, if you practice, almost like you know something you do as you brush your teeth, like you check, you know, check stuff, and it becomes habit. Then it becomes easier. Yeah, I I agree. To be honest, I was I was kind of struggling, right? Because I've studied, uh, I have done it. I think it's pretty w very uh, structured and very systematic product management course. Therefore, I personally, I don't think I do. I need to do a boot camp. It's more about practice, as you mentioned. Yep, and practice. Yeah. You know, this is this is where I'm going to share. You know, actually, we're almost at the end here. The the way that you can practice actually is by identifying people who are in need of serious mm -hmm. product management, right? So, for example, I I have a lot of friends who have small businesses, who have startups. And they're in need of, of help, right? And they've asked me, they're like, hey, can, I, can you help me? And I would love to, right? But the thing is that I'm, I'm so tied in, every diff er in all these different areas. So what I'm trying to do is actually, I'm trying to, as part of this group also, is figure out who wants practice, right? Because if you want practice, I'll find opportunities where you can, and I kind of like as a mentor say, okay, I'll guide you through it, get you the practice, yeah you know, build up your portfolio, make a connection as well, you know, and, and, and if that's the case, then we can talk a little bit after that as well. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Rich, I think I'm also interested in that part you've just mentioned now to build my skills by practicing. And uh, I think I'll be interested in that too. Good. Yeah. If you guys are for sure, I'm going to send a feedback you know, form after this where you can describe like what are the things that you want to continue working with me on. Uh, one of those is if you want, if you like these these mentorship calls, I'm gonna, I'm still trying to figure it out, right? Like I, this was yeah. one that had like a hundred, almost a hundred people or sixty people here, so I just like didn't know like the format. I like I like this question answer format, so I'll step maybe break it up into smaller groups of like those who are aspiring, those who are already product managers, those who are product leaders, like I just want to tailor my message a little bit better. All right, so also please, I want to find out how do you develop your uh, marketing skill as a product manager such that, because I saw what you showed to us in those templates, are you able to map 
out the customer's journey, the metrics that you want to capture, how you want to attack the market, and all that. How do one build and put all those skills together that will make it to become part of you? Yeah, so with marketing, I, I've, I've learned a lot. So this is the, actually one of the benefits of working at a company is that you get to tap into the minds of these people, right? So I've worked at, you know, like I said, I've worked at Disney, I've worked at, you know, Johnson Johnson, and I, I always am just knowledge hungry, right? I always try to find information from people. So I've learned some of the, you know, practices from talking to people, but just also from my own curiosity. And, you know, at the end of the day with marketing, like this, if, if I were to take a step back, and I would to say, you know, what are the, like, honestly, the three key things to a successful product, right? Number one, it's, can I get people, right? User acquisition, right? That's your marketing, that's your, you know, whatever. How, how do you get people to come and see this thing, right? Number two is, how do you get people to convert? <laughs> how do you get people to actually use it, right? Or buy it or whatever. And then number three, how do you keep, com how do you keep them coming back, right? Retention. Those, it's literally that simple. It's those three things. And, you know, when you can do marketing in a way where it tackles that first thing of getting people, you know, in a way, and you're, and you're, you're, you're strategic, you have to kind of know your audience, right? So for example, I wanted to, you know, connect with product managers. So what did I do in terms of my marketing of this? I went to Slack, right? I know people in product school go to Slack. And so I use that as my marketing channel, right? And, and you know, I'm, I'm very grateful for it because now I've been able to connect with you guys, right? So it just comes down to knowing your audience and knowing where they are, what they, what they use and going after them in that way. Cool. Okay. So we're at 9:30. I said I would continue and I definitely will. If you guys, if you guys need to drop off, feel free. Again, I just want to say thank you for anyone who does need to drop off. Thank you so much for joining. Um, I'm going to do a quick, actually, if you do have your camera on, can you just like put it on? I want to take like a, like a screenshot so that I can, you know, actually capture this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. With a smile, actually. What's that? I need a camera with a smile. I didn't hear that too well, but yeah, I said everyone should turn on the camera with a smile on your face. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn on your yeah, camera. Turn. This is this is like my way. Like I, I actually love uh, electronic dance music. Uh, Steve Aoki is one of my favorite artists, and he always has like that you know picture with everyone in the background. So this is gonna be my my Steve Aoki moment right now. So if you have your camera on, please, please, please turn it on. Thank you guys for for joining. Um, okay, I'm gonna take a screenshot here. There's like so many of you guys, this is so cool. And then I'm gonna take a screenshot here. There we go. Now I see some of you guys. And then right here. Awesome. Well, you've stuck around for one hour and 30 minutes. I, I appreciate for those who you know need to leave I totally understand, but thank you so much for joining. I'm going to keep rolling for anyone who wants to stay on. Ultimately know that this is, you know, for me, something that I'm truly passionate about, truly helping people. And, and that's why, you know, if you guys want to continue, I'm going to, you know, like I said, offer this as a weekly thing. I'm going to be doing the actual, you know, practice, uh, finding opportunities for people who want to practice and, and also offering, I'm going to start creating YouTube content, right? If you guys like this and you guys think I should, you know, start creating channel for it, I, this is what I'm thinking about doing. And, and, and I would yeah. love for you guys to like, to like subscribe and then also just share with your friends to, to tell people about me and, and, and hopefully you found some value. And so you give some of that feedback to me as well. Of like I tried this and it worked and you know, you know, this is awesome or no, this didn't work. You know, like I want to, like, I want to know, I want the feedback so that I can always improve. You know, because at the end of the day, all, all of us, we are all on this journey together and just want to help you guys out. All right. All right. Thank you, Rich. Um, please, um, when, how soon would you be getting back to us on the, uh, uh, how to continue with this and uh, also those articles that you shared with us during this presentation? How soon should we be expecting your feedback?
So I will try to send it this weekend. I'm going to kind of put it all together. I'm going to watch the recording. I mean, actually, uh, if, if you guys can help me out, this would actually be really cool. Last, last session, I spent a lot of time on actually trying to find the, the areas in the, in the video where I talked about certain things. So I can send the video link. You guys can just like watch it. And then maybe one of you guys or, or multiple of you guys can just like help me take some, maybe some, take some notes or share some of the notes and, and also write down the markers, like the, the video markers. Cause that way I love being able to just very easily have someone look at stuff like, you know, oh, I want to go to this section or this section, right? If you guys can help me out with that, then I can focus on the other stuff, putting it all together, you know, the, the links and all that. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Like I said, I'm going to stick around for 30 minutes. If you guys want to, you know, whoever wants to stick around, feel free. You know, uh, I can talk about, you know, again, the startup world. I can sort of talk about the, you know, building a company in the world, <laughs> you know, side <laughs> company uh, while working. It's just, it's, this is all, you know, for you yeah, guys. Yeah, I'd love to hear from that, starting a company while you're working still. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's, let's jump into that. So if anyone wants to stick around, let's, I'm going to share my screen. I'll keep going. So, you know. Okay, um, can, can I ask a, a question? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Rich, I, I am a PM here in Brazil. Okay. And I wor uh, work since in this position since uh, 2017. And uh, what I have trouble with is how to seek a job abroad, job, how to, to, to find a, a position that's not in my, my area here. Because I, I see that uh, sometimes I can improve myself and I can get a network within the companies here. But... Uh, 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 sometimes seems like the 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 sky is not the limit, like the yeah. country is the limit, and then the, uh, I cannot see how to pass this because uh, like companies that uh, you work for sometimes it's, it's like too far for me to to reach out or uh, even even doing everything that you said today, like uh, building an impact uh, and uh, making the company see ourselves like. Uh, someone they they should be considering on hiring. Uh, there are other aspects like uh, a visa or uh, like uh, 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 working not remotely, like in yeah. person. That people, uh, some companies are not. Uh, yeah, no, it sounds. Want like, to do this? It sounds like a, a good product problem to tackle you know like how, how do you come up with a solution how do you come up with a you know there's going to be like many many people probably in the same shoes right they want actually to yeah that's sorry to interrupt you but i have been through that process um so i had this limitation of country and i moved from india three years back and i'm in canada vancouver right now so actually i was thinking of bringing this information i had this idea in mind of helping people on how to make that transition because I did feel a lot of bottlenecks and hardships in between mm -hmm. and from getting the visa actually inception of how to which country to choose how to make that change and then on the job front how to uh, explore how to it was it was a tough situation but I think so I have a lot to, a lot to offer so anyone who is interested at least they can reach out to me yeah yeah send your um, name in the chat so that way or your email so that way our Brazilian friend can, can give you a reach sure, sure, sure. honestly I mean, you're, you're, you're talking a problem right now, right? And, and problems like product people, you guys know how to address to solve that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to solve it, you know, that, you know, that literally that's li like a lot of times we try to solve problems for ourselves and then realize like, wow, a lot of other people have the same problem. Right. And, and that's great when you can, when you can do that. So maybe there's a, an idea there right like yeah. honestly like it'd be really cool this is actually something i've been thinking about too is like as part of this little private group session maybe we can come up with some cool ideas together and maybe even execute on some of them right or you know i can show you guys some of the resources that you could do because you know like the fact is as product managers you know we kind of need to you know, understand you know development and and all that stuff but you don't have to code yourself right like that's one of the misconceptions you don't have to code. You have to res you have to ha gain respect from people who are going to code, right? That's what you have to gain. And when you gain that by being able to again relate to people, right? It's it's so crazy to me. Like we, 
I, we have we have developers, uh, you know, at our company who are from um, Argentina and Colombia and you know South America, right? And and one of the things that I always do is just I just I just ask them about life, right? Like how are they doing? Like not work, right? I connect with them on a on a level that is different, and that for for us gets us a little bit more close together. And I think that that also comes with you sharing something of value of, of new new to them, right? Like. You know, if you understand and if you realize that like someone likes, you know, data scraping, right? Like they're they're learning data scraping, right? Okay, well, go find something that you could probably share that they don't know about, and now you've gained a little bit more credibility and respect. That's what it comes down to, right? So again, I, I think I think about maybe even saying, okay, how do we come up with like, again, th this pandemic that we're in? There's just so many and now ideas that people. There's okay. Let me take a step back. There are many problems that people can address solutions to, right? Always find the problem first, find out there's many people that need, that have that problem and then iterate, try to validate, right? And, and maybe we can have it like almost like an incubation here. We will find some developers. Maybe we get some people, we pit, ship it, right? Like, again, I'm, I'm all excited about this group and, and everything. So hopefully that, I, that was, that was way too long, but uh, let's go into the question about entrepreneurship and kind of side stuff. Yeah. Hey, um, hi, Rich. Oh. All right. Rich, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I have a quick question. Um, thanks for the lecture. It's um, really worth my time. Like, I wasn't expecting to stick for this long. And I'm glad I had to take, had to make the sacrifice. Yeah, thanks. So, um, is there some um, sort of group where we can because we didn't get to meet we didn't get to network with them everyone and i would assume everyone in the group are uh, probably people into um, pm already or aspiring PMs, just like me um aspiring PM. even um, probably like a whatsapp channel or a slack channel just limited to all of us on yeah um all of your mentees yeah no so, this yeah. is i'm i'm gonna create this this riches you know group or whatever i don't know what it's called yet but we'll we'll get everyone in there and I, and i and i want it to be a place again for us to all you know learn from each other right i'm also a student <laughs> i want to learn from you guys right i mean i've, I've been learning tiktok you know like I, I didn't know about that you know before and now with the quarantine and all that stuff I'm, I'm i'm on tiktok now you know so i want to learn i want to learn as well so i'll create a group and we'll, we'll put us all in there and we can come up with ideas as well. We'll come up with resources. I'll, that's be a good way to share stuff. Yeah, that's all a thumbs up. So, um, yeah, definitely, definitely, we'll do that. Yeah, cool. Any other questions before we jump into entrepreneurship? Because that's that is a big one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Um, Gil here uh, from South Korea. Uh, thank you so much for your your, uh, your information. Uh, re regarding the product school, uh, since you mentioned, and um, uh, I'm a newbie, uh, I have um, maybe um, three years like QA and here and UX background, but um, as a newbie for product manager uh, or product manage management field, uh, would you recommend uh, attending those three certificate courses, uh, you know, like $10,000 worth, I think, um, as, for a newbie PM? Or just you know somebody else asked like Udemy or like other yeah. uh, digital online courses and whatnot. Yeah, no. Here's here, here's the thing again. I'll say right. I believe that courses are valuable because they give you structure, right? Because you know when you go to school, you have a curriculum, you follow it, and you'll get the basic understandings and the principles, right? But it really is you on the other side who has to uh, practice it and apply it right that's why again i say i own, i i don't I haven't i've never gone to a product management school or certificate i've done courses right short courses on on udacity i've done you know i did get my certification in google analytics right but for product management i personally have not done that but i'm not i'm not suggesting i'm not saying that you shouldn't right all i'm saying is that you should find ways if again if you're if you if you don't want to spend the money then i understand right but just know that there there comes 
a price to not doing that as well, right? There's, okay, I gotta like figure it out my own and I gotta, right? So there's, there's definitely structure that you, you lose. But if you do, if you find ways to practice, if you find ways to do those things, right? It, it can help. And, you know, that's part of the, partly the really reason why I'm doing this is number one is I want to find if there is a true need for my help in the world. Right. Cause like, you know, I, I've been sharing a couple of things now with, you know, a few folks and now it's, I've reached a lot more people. Is it something that I want to do full time? Right. Cause I am, I'm, I have a job right now. It's, it's, I, it's sort of, it's really, really fulfilling. It's awesome. But I like this as well. I like being able to share, and I, I want to see how can I scale my own expertise in not just product management, but personal development and entrepreneurship and, and you know, at a, at a price point that is, is reasonable for people, right? Because that's, that's the thing with education is that it limits people who don't have the funds and the means, right? And, and that's always been the challenge. That's always been, you know, the problem. And that's why I'm at Newstride is because what, one of the things that we're trying to do is we're, we're working with companies that like Uber and Starbucks, they're, they're two of our clients who actually who pay for their employees to go to school, right? And I think we're going to see a massive shift in, in, in education because of this pandemic that we're in. And so it's, it's like, you know, the price point of education is going to go down, I, I believe. And but I think it's not just, it's, again, it's not just that, that we have to focus on. We have to focus on ourselves, on our, on our, our finance education, on our family education, on, on our friends. Like all of that stuff makes you a more, you know, complete human being, right? And, and that, I, at least for me, I get a lot of that edu other education from Mind Valley. I'm not sure if you guys have heard of Mind Valley, but they're a, you know, it's a, it's a company that, puts out content and and they have a lot of different coaches and, and or instructors for things like fitness and you know uh, career and learning like there's a lot of different people and that in the personal development world and that's where i've recently been getting a lot more of my knowledge from because i just at the end of the day i want to live a very fulfilling life right um and you know doing this could be very fulfilling for me right uh, Rich, sorry to interrupt you. Just I want to add to that point since this story is very relevant to me. So to add, I am from a QA background, automation and testing, and I have just started out. And I actually have enrolled myself in the product school. Yes, it's an, the only downside is it's expensive. It's around four thousand USD, but from my experience, it's just been around one and a half week, and it seems like I was in a pond and I've gone into a sea. So I have like, I'm seeing webinars, I'm seeing blogs, and definitely the product school days mentor from Microsoft. So she is, she's super experienced. And then I'm collaborating with people. And even if I could reach to you was because you, uh, I could, we could connect on Slack and Slack has a community of around 60,000 product managers. And you have this tools that are being published blogs. So I think so if money is not a constraint, I would definitely recommend it. And, and, and the second to add to your uh, uh, thing that is, are you valuable? I would say definitely, especially for people who are aspiring to be PMs or in general, just wanting to learn more on this area because I have been doing a lot of uh, hard work from my end since last one month. I had enrolled into Coursera and doing a lot of hard work. Actually, I just have for two hour, hours last night because I've been just super involved in it because I have a full-time job. But for you, definitely, I think so. It's it's super valuable. Yeah. Great. Great. Love so to hear that. that. I love to hear that. Thank you. Any other questions before we jump into the, this, and I do like this format to be honest a little bit more. So I, this is what I did with my last session is that I literally went through all the questions one by one and I was like, okay, you know, um, David, like, you know, who, who, who's David, right. And like share a little bit more about yourself and then oh, let's, let's go to your question. Right. I, I did do that and that, it, see, it, did, it did work. I just felt like with like, you know, 60 or 70 people, it was going to be, I don't, I don't think I was always going to get to anyone or everyone. Right. So, but if you guys like it, maybe I'll try, I'll try to do it in smaller sessions and then maybe that's what we can do. So do you guys like this smaller session, like Q and a, like, like, you know, more than just me talking or do you like me talking or what? Yeah. So I in, like, just to add, like uh, I recently graduated from the product school. Like the, I mean, I took a product management class. 
and uh, so there was it was like about uh, there were like 12 people there like 12 or 15 people and it because of the conversation like you know you can constantly like in dialogue with the uh, person who's delivering the lecture it was really helpful like and you were also very involved and like you could yeah. ask questions and stuff like that because with like 80 90 people you like uh, once i mean it's going to be like a bombarding of questions like you know, yeah. <laughs> so i mean small group definitely helped and uh, yeah as in i think even like quick i mean group sessions could also be fun i th- i feel yeah uh, like you know very quick Chat sessions things, yeah. like like so one of the things that we did was like develop a quick five slide deck sort of a thing and then just quickly present your idea and then you can like just critique us on that like you know mm-hmm. what went wrong and what what was good and stuff like that so that could also be like one way to do it i mean yes. I, don't, i don't know how yeah. effective it will be but like you could like just say that you know this is this is the problem statement and everyone like if it's a small group then everyone can just come up with something real quick and then you can like take it from there yeah okay. actually i like that a lot like me helping you guys by you doing the work i critique or i like give my feedback and then you yeah and then we kind of go rapid fire yeah, yeah. yeah. okay yeah. i like that i like that thank you and and sorry your name uh, yeah. i'm abhishek abhishek thank you abhishek any other feedback actually as as we're talking about feedback like what's what's something that i can like do next time a little bit better or yeah like, yeah this is like this is like yeah for me i think um oh i like the idea of you presenting to us then after because why you were presenting to be honest based on some of the documents and information you shared with us a lot of things in fact it makes a lot of us to understand us what we think we know now we don't know anything to be honest with you when i say that is because you know part of the things that helps the pm is when you are hand with the right tools to be able to, to do your job mm-hmm. many of us are talks and we if not for the fact that you made mention of some tools that you were showing us referring to them it makes in fact that actually helps a lot of us to see our weakness that we definitely need to we know we need some of those templates some of those stuff to be able to carve out our own world so that makes a lot of sense then after that session i think it would also be nice to also dedicate another time for q and a where everybody can you know ask questions based on what has been shared based on their personal problems and i think with that is going to help every one of us to you know to come up to speed with what we need to understand regarding to this pm thank you yeah i love it i love the feedback thank you this is this is this is awesome any other feedback so, like? um, yeah yeah go that made a lot of uh, a lot of sense um presenting and after the present after i present we kind of um, ask our questions so i suggest um there's this so i will try um, to look up the name and probably send it to you on slack or on um, linkedin so each one during the section you um everyone notes down their questions and they post it onto this um onto the website and if it's relevant to other people they can um, sort of upvote it so the most relevant one yeah you answer that i think yes yeah, slide over here so just reply now slide over here right yeah yeah i like so i think that will help as well yeah like an upvoting system of okay here's a question you know people can also yeah. look at it they can then it goes to the top and that's when i look at yeah yeah i like that too okay thank you and then the one thing that i was thinking would be it, it might be useful and you kind of mentioned it earlier is to break it out into uh your background so maybe you're an aspiring pm or you already are a pm or you're looking to get into product leadership th- those kinds of yeah. od- so you're in a similar audience asking similar questions would be yeah. cool too yep perfect uh actually the one thing you could ju- uh, yeah sorry uh one thing i actually recently saw gibson's uh he's a vp of previous vp of netflix so he had a presentation one thing he had used was slido and he had this qr code so everyone could just like he was taking on dynamic polls so you could just scan the camera you go to the page and you can give your feedback instantly say what are you looking for in life or from product management what are your pain pain points and he had the survey on demand which he could see and give and and continuous presentation from there so continuous feedback from the crowd and then taking from there and and then i, I have actually noted those down because i'm also interested in giving presentation so yeah i think they had just survey monkey or something um, uh, for like something else for polling and surveys so 
some technologies that you could use might be easier for you to manage your workflow and yeah. interact more with people. That what is it, what was it called again? Slide. Oh, Lido, Slido. Like just slide. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's in the comment. Okay, cool. Yeah, keep them coming, guys. I mean, this is honestly this is the first. So on, do, maybe. Okay. Someone just posted now that uh, Zoom also has a Q and A hey features that allows you to probably post Q and I don't know. I just saw it in as a, as a message. Yeah, I think yeah yeah that's right. It's like a it's like a webinar feature I think right. I think it might be webinar. Slide okay there we go slide. So hmm. see I'm learning from you guys. Thank you. This is I'm, I'm not heard of that one. Hey Bridge. Um, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, as a feedback to um, uh, your question, um, I, I uh, agree with the, the previous person. Um, like segmenting uh, the uh, experience group, <laughs> uh, experience-wise, uh, I think that would really, really help uh, this. You know, the, um, the questions or or contents uh, that right. I hear toward the uh, toward us. Uh, yeah. If if I can ask uh, one uh, quick uh, follow-up question or. Um, yeah. A, a personal question. Um, I'm a, like I said, a newbie in this um, product management, but I, I'm with you. I, uh, uh, the, the vision uh, or the mission statement that you uh, posted in your LinkedIn, uh, I'm, I'm like, like you, uh, uh, trying to uh, stop, make everyone like a superhuman or like, you know, mm -hmm. like super productive. Yeah. Um, and the question that I have for uh, I mean, like for many, many months uh, so far is that what's the uh, first step I need to take or what should, should I focus right now? Um, for example, like, should I um, put together all the, uh, you know, like, should I uh, prove myself? Okay, I can do this. Um, like that kind of like portfolio uh, to get my hands uh, or to get my foot into the product uh, management role in maybe associate role in a, a, some company yeah. or should I, uh, you mentioned about like, we don't need the coding skill, um, um, like, like deep coding skill, but uh, should I go into maybe like, uh, should I, you know, uh, learn coding, uh, data analytics or product yeah. management, like, et cetera. Yeah. yeah. So what, what would you recommend? Like skill, it's okay. uh, to focus so right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll break it up into two parts, right? So the first part, like I said, I, I, I totally, totally mean this when I say that you have to really know yourself and know your values and know everything about you, right? The only reason why I'm here right now and sharing is because I've done the exercise of knowing myself. I, I always told myself I wanted to be someone who gave advice and stuff like that, but I never actually did it because I always said like, I want to know myself more than I, than I, you know, did before, because I, I, I believe that you can't give advice if you don't know who you are. Right. And now that I've gone through the exercise of knowing where, where I want to go, what my values are and what I love, what I don't love and all that stuff. Now I feel that I, I have the, the privilege of being able to do that. Right. So for you, if that is one of the things you want to do is you want to help people also unlock their, their super productivity skills or whatever it is, you have to do it first for yourself, right? There's a saying I think that goes that, you know, or not a saying, but it's like the security or safety thing that, you know, when you're on a plane and, and you have to, you know, put on your mask, you like you put on your mask and then you put on your kid's mask, right? Because that means you have to take care of yourself first and then that's when you can take care of others. So focus on yourself. I cannot, you know, stress it enough is, know know yourself well enough to know like where you want to be in 10 years and and everything in all the different areas so that's definitely number one okay number two as far as skills and, and coding and you know look i i did come from a computer engineering background so i i do have some of that technical skills right but i will say <laughs> as much as i love my education i didn't use any of it <laughs> from from college right? I, I learned everything on the go, right? I learned things from cure, being very curious, right? I think that's what you have to learn more is how to be curious, right? Because if you're curious, you will naturally just want to go in, a, in an area. 
right? So I was very curious about data and analytics. And so what did I do? I learned data, right? And, and now I'm at the point where, like I said, I can, I think one of the greatest skills to, I mean, one of the greatest things to have from a technical technology standpoint is to be able to really know data well because it, it controls it controls everything right it is the the new gold it is what's going to power your machine learning algorithm it's what's going to make decisions or help inform decisions if you can un, if you know how to get data whether it's you know scraping it or talking to someone and getting it or whatever right data getting acquisition of data that is that is also a really good skill and then the the second skill to that is obviously understanding the data and visualizing it and interpreting it and getting insights from it is also important, right? Development wise, I mean, things are getting a little bit, things are getting easier actually. I don't even talk to developers, but like the way that you used to develop before is totally different the way it is being developed right now. Things are just off the shelf. You just pull it from a library and it's, it's already done, right? Like it, we're moving very, very fast in technology. And, and there's many tools out there that require no code to, you can actually build a whole app with no code, right? I think like bubble or something like that is, is what people use now to build like prototypes, no code whatsoever. You use a Google spreadsheet, or use Zapier or whatever, and you connect it together and you, boom, you have your application, right? It, it's great. Like the things that are happening now are far much easier and accessible than before. That's why I say, if you want to learn something, probably focus on the data. Thank you so much. And, and Rich, sorry, to, like since we're in a collaborative session here, so I just want to bring two points that might be useful. Can yeah, I, can go, I go in? I think so first thing is like, again, I'm in the very same boat as Gil. So first thing what I feel is you have to understand yourself if you really want this. Yes. Because being, being an engineer, you're working mostly on your own. You're, you're an individual contributor. So you code or you test and, but with product management, you're dealing with a lot of people. So are you going to be comfortable with dealing with say politics in the office or convincing people? Because you're going to see a lot of rejection from them and you have, so are you somebody who likes working alone or in a group? because that is going to add, create additional responsibilities and, and stress on you. Yep. So are you first thing, and it took me about two years to figure that out if I was a right fit. Yeah. Because I love coding, but somehow I, I was not fully satisfied. <laughs> uh, yeah. and, and, and the second thing I would say is you have, it, it's, it's a, yeah. So um, like the ratio of engineers to product managers is six is to one. So it's a competitive domain. So you have to be willing to sacrifice your personal life and really focus on this, especially if you have a full-time job and a family to support or, and because it is, it's, it's a difficult thing to do and requires a lot of commitment of your time and effort because, and you should be mentally prepared for that because I saw like there was this one person who actually failed for two years. He didn't have a job for two years before making as a PM to Facebook. So he had failure for like two years. So can you go through that phase of failure? Yep. Do you have the, so this is just to add to your from the point. So it's very, as you mentioned, to understand yourself, what you really want. Yeah. I think you put it very well. So. Exactly. Yeah. Know your, know what your why is, right? Why do you want to be a product manager, yeah. right? Yeah. What is it that <laughs> excites you and, and, and pulls you to it? That's why I say like, if you can look at a product and you love it, right? Like I look at products and I love them, right? I, I give everything to them because I know that the sweat and the energy that went into building that thing. I, appreciate it. I think that's also another good tactic. Okay, sorry. Someone was gonna say something. Me. Yeah. I was wondering, uh, so I'm also doing UI UX design and I wanted to do product management even before I began my studies. And I wanted to know, besides user research, besides, you know, personas, um, what are some of the most, uh, some, what are some of the things that I should really uh, focus on during my UI UX studies that will be useful to me in product management? Empathy. I think empathy and your ability to empathize with your users or your people is the strongest skill you can gain from UX, you, you just, like, it's not like, again, the, 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 like the skill, but it's like the, you know, technical skill or whatever, like, you know, oh, use this tool. No. When you have empathy 
for your your users when you have empathy for your developers for your team for for everyone right you just be again this is my perspective right I, it could be completely wrong but this is this is what's worked for me when i've seen and when i've had empathy for my users their problems become my problems and i make sure that their problems get solved because they're my problems right because i believe in what we're doing and i believe in what you're making that happen for them the moment that you don't have empathy for your your users anymore is a moment where you realize that maybe you're not you know, passionate about it anymore, right? Or uh, actually said in a different way. I love Jay Shetty and, and I mentioned before, right? You know, he has a really good quote that says, you know, you, you develop a passion for yourself, but you develop a purpose for other people, right? And when you can have empathy and in your pure purpose is to try to serve those other people, then it just, you'll just naturally do what it takes, right? There's challenges that come in your way and then you'll just do naturally what it takes. So I would say that for sure. And again, it comes with, again, the ability in, um, what's your name? Sorry, R Rishab, is that how you say it? Yeah. Uh, yes, got it. that's what it, yeah. It's yeah, no. yeah, like Rishab said, like, you know, it comes down to working with people and when you can empathize with other people and you know what they're struggling with and and you know you know like the marketing team and and you can empathize with people like that i think that for me has been my like in a way secret sauce gift i don't know if you want to call it a gift but it my superpower right it actually i listed it's one of the things that i when i did my assessment empathy was one of my superpowers in that i have an ability to empathize with people and like, it's a, me and them, 100%. Like, I'm looking at you right now. It's just us, right? Because I want to help you. Right, yeah. thank you, thank you, Rich. Um, I want to find out, have you had time where you have a difficulties with your engineers while building a product? And how were you able to, to overcome that? You know, there are some engineers that just want to do things their own way, the way they think. <laughs> And yeah. despite that, how were you able to, you know, cope with them to still have a very good product? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> That's, yes. Uh, so working with engineers, like you say, can be a little, sometimes can be challenging because, you know, they're ultimately the ones who are going to create the thing, right? And, you know, you, you, you have to develop some, some level of trust, Right. The one I have, I have faced challenges sometimes where, you know, an engineer or someone or developer will tell me that it's going to, you know, something is going to take, you know, I don't know, five, three weeks or something. It's going to take a long time. And I only have two days. I, you know, like there's, there's, there's a, there, you know, definitely a miscommunication, not miscommunication. There is a difference of opinion of how we want to do this. Right. What I've found is that there has to be some level of negotiation right? Some level of trade-off that you have to develop with your engineers. And this does come with, again, with developing rapport, developing respect, right? I've gained respect from engineers because of multiple ways, right? Like I said, because I, I show them that I know, I, 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 that I care about what they do, right? What they're doing is, is beautiful, right? Like they're building something, they're creating and they're building respect that right also respect what they're doing and then also just like help them learn something new right i think those are two great tactics but once you gain that level of you know uh, connection with the engineer it negotiation is actually a little bit easier right so let's say you know they're this is the, the use case right you need something done in three days they'll tell you it's going to be done in three weeks fine got it why Right. Why is it going to be done in three weeks? Well, because we have these other priorities. Oh, okay. Priorities. We talked about priorities, right? Okay. Why is it a priority for you right now? Well, because, you know, my boss told me I have to focus on this. Oh, it's your boss. Okay. Let me go talk to your boss and let's go figure out what we can do. Well, we can trade off, right? Sometimes he's just following orders. The engineer is just following what, the, what they're being told to do, right? From a different person. So if you can find, if you can ask, you know, ask the whys, why, why, and find the root of the cause of the problem, maybe you can do a trade-off. You can say, you know, can we do this in, in a week instead of three weeks? 
and move the priority from this to this, right? You have to also be willing to, to, to give and trade off and negotiate. Sound good? What I think that that's really helpful about negotiation, negotiating with uh, devs is you speaking their language. Like uh, sometimes when a PM don't know what they are talking about, the, the developers, they just ignore him. Yeah. So uh, what I think it's uh, when you talk the same language as they, they are saying, so they, that builds rapport. Yeah. And uh, uh, it helps you negotiating with, yes. with uh, background and, and everything. Yeah. I mean, it's again, it's like, this is why I say appreciate, 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 because, you know, they, they, it takes, it takes time. Things take time. Right. And we as, as a society have, have been always go, 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 go. I need things fast, 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 fast. Right. And it's just the way it is. And, and obviously we build products to be faster, right. To make things faster and easier. But sometimes we also just need to like appreciate the, the beauty and the, the work that goes into building something, creating something. And when you can do that, you get a lot of respect. I totally agree with that, Rich. And actually just to add on to that, Empathy is number one, a product manager need to have. And I think so we ourselves in our daily lives also practice that more yeah. to, uh, to make this world a better place. And I think so that's one, we should not just a PM should practice, but every one of us should practice or have that. And on to add to your uh, connecting with your developers, one issue which I've seen is to be able to speak the language. And one, I think so it's a very well known thing is that product manager needs to be able to lead without authority. So he is not your directly engineering manager and you have to learn that skill. Yeah. And, and, and it's about leading from the front. Like you have to take charge. You have to be accountable and you have to be technically sound. So again, you need not know in depth programming, but you should be able to understand the technology, the infrastructure or so. And, and, and again, for that, it requires effort from your end. You know, there's a gap and you have to be, you need to put effort to co cover that gap. Hi there. Uh, this is Anastasia from Ukraine. So, uh, well, I think I have something to add. Um, it's not only the empathy uh, on your end, but uh, I think one uh, should have some stories on their end to explain why something is important. Because let's say, if you say the developer that you need that work to be done in a week, uh, it's just you telling him the work needs to be done in a week. And if you, let's say, say um, that your client has some big demo or something like that. They just try to feel the situation on their end and they um, understand much more than one week. So it's like probably something about the storytelling uh, you've been sharing with us. This is something uh, we should do talking to everyone, I yeah. think. Yeah, very, very, very good point. Yeah, when you can have everyone on the same wavelength and believe the same thing right you all will do i mean that this is why so many people now are are all like you know helping and donating and right because we're all we all want to help right and and there's a story around why you want to help is because of this right so storytelling so so powerful when you can use it well awesome Eddie, so, yes uh, uh so it's like you have uh, as you have earlier talked about how data scraping or data visualizing was important. So there are these instances where you don't have enough data to take a decision. And I'm pretty sure you must have experienced many of those too. So how did you deal with those? Yeah, that's, that's your, your product intuition that no. comes into play. You know, when you don't have enough data, right? What do you do? So, <clears throat> couple things. When I don't have enough data, I always try to look for more data. <laughs> um, you know, there, there, I, I try to find something else because at the end of the day, our guts, yes, they can tell us or they can, you know, weigh us. At the end of the day, it's emotion, right? That, that, that gets us going one way or another. But data is, it, it's trans, you know, one and zero, right? So if I can't get it, I'll go somewhere else and I'll try to find it. Right. And I, when I was at Disney, this was a common problem. <laughs> data was in the hands of these keepers, the analytics people, and no one could touch the data. Right. You had to have secret keys and you had to do all this stuff. And you're like, 
come on, man. Like, I, I need this, right? And they're like, no, put in a request. And it's like, so what, I mean, I'm not going to just like not get it, right? I'm going to find a way. <laughs> the, the data is there, you know, how do I go get it? If you don't, if let's say like there is no data whatsoever, like there's no tracking, there's no anything, then okay, that's a different story, right? There's no tracking, you know, there are other things you can use uh, like benchmarking, right? A lot of, uh, you know, companies, they'll, they'll actually benchmark their, you know, like they'll take extrapolations or they'll, they'll share like, okay, out of my clients in the education world, you know, 40% of people usually do this or something, right? Um, so Google, Google does this. They have this, I think it's called Think think with Google, I think it's what it's called. They have like a repository, a data set, a library of like all this different data that's available that you can use and you can use as a, as an inference. You can use it as like a way to, uh, you know, generate a hypothesis. That's what that comes, right? It becomes a hypothesis at that point. Okay, this is my belief, right? I have, a, I have some, you know, somewhat of good data to help back it up. Now let me go prove it. Now let me go get actual data, right? Um, yeah, that, that's what I would say for that. And I have another question. So um, we're talking about, you know, uh, having some grounding about different decisions. And I have fa faced some situations when there was no data behind um, the re requests of the users. And um, well, we've been developing some product for a client and uh, we actually understood that there was no actually there was no point in doing that but and we explained the reason why and the client told something like well i know that it will work and that's it and there was no you know we understood that it is actually worthless but yeah. we uh, we got the way uh to do it better but the client didn't want it to be so so um have you ever faced something like that <laughs> Yeah, all the time. I mean, that's sometimes that's that's one of the challenges that I think working at a company or you know I was in the digital agency world and that you know you're essentially a service to a client, right? Like they are the people who are making the decisions, and at the end of the day, you know it's their product. <laughs> you know, you're the one creating it, building it, and so how do you deal with that? Well, you know. Honestly, it, it just comes to, at least in my experience, it's sharing what you have. It's just being you being you, you sharing your recommendation, right? And and that's the best you can do. At the end of the day, if that recommendation is not taken, then then it wasn't you know, it's not taken, right? But you made at least the conscious effort to share what you know, so people can make the decision. And that's happened to me a lot of times, where, you know. I've been at companies where it's a top down, you know, strategy of like, no, nope, it's whatever the, the VP says, that's what's going to happen. And I don't always agree with that. Right. I'll bring out, but I'll bring my, my rebuttal. I'll bring the data. I'll bring whatever I need to do to make sure that I bring my point and, and I'm, I'm, I bring my story. I bring everything to convince everyone. And if at the end of the day, it doesn't happen, you know what? I'm going to wait. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to look at my clock and be like, okay, in a month or two, when this doesn't work, I'll say, you know, well, you know, should... <laughs> but that built actually that with that, when you do that though, if you, if you actually say something and you don't just let it go away, right. You say something, then the next time when they try to listen to you, maybe they'll say, okay, maybe you have a point now. Right. But you have to be vocal. You have to share it. You can't let it, just sit. yeah thank you uh, rich one question on the failure uh, what's been your biggest failure in this area and like some advice we're going to give to anyone in this round my biggest failure with product management specifically or <laughs> you, you can give both because you're so inform informative so you can give anything you want okay you know I, I, I have learned to appreciate and value failure, right? I, I was never like that before. Um, in school, I was, you know, raised that, you know, failing is bad, right? You should never fail. And 
I became very, very overly cautious and I never wanted to try and I never wanted to take risks, right? And it wasn't until I got to college where I realized like, no, it's, it's fine to fail, right? You, you learn from failure, yeah. right? And, and actually I worked out, right? The point of like the way you get muscles is by, and they grow is by putting your body through failure. <laughs> like that's yeah. literally the way you, you grow your muscles. True. That's the only way. So for me, my biggest failure is in the beginning, just not accepting failure, <laughs> to be honest right? And not taking risks, not taking enough risks. Um, and, and listening to the voice in my head that says, you know, oh, you, you know, you shouldn't do that because, you know, oh, they're going to judge you or they're going to say something to you. Yeah. Um, I think when you can turn that voice off and just do what you want to do and, you know, fail, but fail with the intent of learning, then you will grow, you will learn and you will advance, right? Yeah. That sounds good. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. Dang, you guys are awesome. I, I, I just want to say thank you again. Like, I, you have no idea. This is, this is something I really want to just continue to do. And, you know, like I, I have another one coming up on the 18th and I figure I'd, you know, I'll invite you guys as well, obviously, to come back and, um, and, and continue these conversations, right? And, but ultimately, like I said, I wanna see if it, if it is valuable and you think that we can impact more people and you know, I, I do wanna potentially, you know, like as much as I love product management, I, and I do, don't get me wrong, but I feel like I said, my value, my purpose is to just, you know, I think that actually this is, this is my kind of my uh, belief now, the best product is you right? We as people are the best product. And if, and if I can help build better people, <laughs> better, you know, live, help people live better versions of themselves, then that is a truly fulfilling thing. So again, I, I want to do this more often in order to do this more often. I really, I really need to kind of figure out like the whole, like, how can I make, you know, business or success out of this, right? Cause it has to pay the bills. I have to, you know, I have two dogs, I have a lifestyle and you know, all this stuff. Right. But I don't, I'm not, I'm not planning on charging like, you know, an arm and a leg, like, you know, everything. I, my, my, right now I'm thinking about a subscription model of, you know, like as a mentorship thing, right. For, for four sessions every, every month uh, for $89. And it would be, I'm still, again, thinking about this, the model or the, 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 the amount, but it would be, it would be this, right. It would be weekly. Saturdays or Sundays on the weekends. It's a session. I share something, Q and A. You would get access to like, you know, my Google Drive. Essentially, like I'll, I don't know if you saw, but I have tons of files, right? Uh, essentially, you get access to all my Google Drive files. I have some Trello boards that I haven't even shown you guys yet. Uh, I have, you know, access to just a lot of. And we even didn't even go into the entrepreneur stuff, right? A lot of things that I've done from a entrepreneurship side of things, which you know, sometimes when you're starting an entrepreneurship path, there's a lot of steps you have to do. And I made sure to document all those steps because I know that in the future, there's going to be someone who wants to do it. And if I can help them shorten those number of steps, then there could be a pro a, a, you know, um, a product for that. Right. But anyway, so I'm still, again, I'm not, I'm not going to charge for this one, I'm not charging for the next one. I'm just trying to figure this out. But if this becomes something that you guys are like, man, he needs to keep going. And, you know, like you guys are going to support me, then I'd, I'd, I'd love to continue doing this and, and maybe making this my full time thing. I mean, just doing this right now, I've I've gotten so much joy and just being able to share my my documents. Like, I'll I'll give you everything, man. Like, I've gone through that journey. I've loved it. I've appreciated it. Now it's my turn to give it over to you guys and, and you guys to build great things, you know, in the world. So anyways, um, I, I will stick around if you guys, I mean, the entrepreneur stuff is, is still on top of mind. If you guys want to jump into that, otherwise, you know, whatever, what questions you guys have, um, I'm, I'll answer. Actually, I'm willing to help you out. I think what you're doing is very honorable and I'm still not uh, completely done with my UX design studies. 
I'm already jumping on board product management, <laughs> but I'm uh, trying to my best to help one of my friends out who's starting out in UX. So I'm kind of indirectly doing what you're doing with someone else. Yeah. So I completely understand where you're coming from and heck, I'll, it'll be my pleasure. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much, Nita. That, I'll contact you on LinkedIn after. Okay. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. And even if it's just, you know, feedback, right? Like, I mean, you guys have shared a lot of good feedback right now. I mean, I'm, testimonials like I want to know like if I if, if something works for you like like please let me know because like that's a testimonial that you know maybe it can help someone else um, you know believe that what I'm sharing is actually valuable because I know it is like that's the thing is I know it is because it helped me and 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 I've gone from you know a person who has no product experience you know person who can't read and write as fast as ever well as everyone else to or speak as well as everyone else to now being able to do this and have this session with people like you guys from all around the world is is awesome yeah so um cool well like i said i will i will share one last thing about entrepreneurship if you guys want to stick around and then i do have to probably i mean it's already 10 10 30 for me here i don't know how late it is for you guys i, I mean if it is late I, I thank you again for for sticking around um but i'm going to share one last thing and that's the entrepreneur stuff so give me a couple seconds here i'll share my screen okay so um So what I wanted to share with you guys was this stuff that I forgot to mention. So you guys are the lucky ones now. No worries. I'm not, everyone's going to see this because it's recorded, but <clears throat> own your path, right? So there were a couple of things when I, so when I decided, okay, I want to start like a business. I want to start a company. I want to start a, something on the side. I was like, where do I start? Right? <laughs> like, I know I have the skills, I can do it, but like, what's the product that I'm going to solve? What's the problem I'm going to solve? What's, you know, whatever, what all that stuff, right? And so I naturally, I wanted to pick, again, going back to my values. What do I love? What do I do? What do I, all this stuff. And one of the things I loved are my animals, my pets, my dogs, right? I love to travel. And so I was like, man, I, but I have a lot of problems with traveling, right? Like I, I don't really get to travel with my dogs all the time but I see like people wanting to do this. Maybe there's a, there's a need for this, right? So what did I do? I started with some research, like anything. I always start with research. So, and this is like very raw, like, you know what? I'm just going to go deep into pet market research. I don't know anything about the pet market other than I buy, you know, food and, and all that stuff from like, you know, pet marts or whatever, the, the local pets places. So what I did is I went into research and I just went on sites and I was just typing my, you know, pet market research, I mean, pet market and, and, or I just typed in like in Google, like, you know, market size for pets. Right. And I got back a lot of different results, which I ultimately just put in this document and I just copied stuff. And I was like, okay, you know, Oh, the U S pet market is expected to be more than 30 billion in 2020 too. Oh, well, that's big. Okay. That's okay. So we got some money there. Um, Amazon expects online pet product sales to reach 8.2 million billion in 2018. This is an older article again, proving that like there's, there's, there's a market. And when, when we say market, right, we mean like there's people who are willing to spend on, 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 on something to solve their problem. Right. So ultimately I did this market research and I realized like, holy crap, there is a huge need or there's a huge demand, like right now, right? You see this millennials households between the ages of 22 and 37 are earning more money than ever. And because of that, they're also spending more on their animals. They're like, US, I think in the US, it, they say that uh, people are not, you know, having kids as much and instead, you know, are shopping and, and getting pets and they're basically treating them as babies, right? And so I was like, oh, well, then that's exactly my target audience. That's kind of like me, right? An average dog spend, dog owner spends about 1200 a year on their pet, right? So I knew right there that I was like, okay, there's, there's potential with this. And once I started to understand that, what did I do next? I started to 
uh, do some mar uh, some research into like people who own pets, and I wanted to validate because I I have a pet and I know that we how much we spend. Then I asked around. I was like, well, how much do you guys spend? What kind of dogs do you guys have? And do you guys travel with your dogs and all that stuff, right? And I ultimately put together like a form. I think I have it here. Um, dog. Let's see if I can find it. It's in somewhere in my Google Drive here. You'll see my, I try to be organized, but it doesn't always work. But so I try to stick with like this kind of, you know, okay, there's, there's the research, there's the analytics, there's the actual dev work, there's, you know, all that other stuff. So, um, no, that's not it. Let's see. If I can't find it, it's fine. Basically, I put together a survey and like any good product manager, you survey your, your, your users. You find out like, you know, how much are people willing to spend other animals right now? Like, what do they do? Do they travel? All that stuff. I wanted to learn. I wanted to get my information from them. And I find, I learned, I validated that, yes, people do want to do this, right? And so then the natural next step was, I wasn't going to start building right away. No. The next thing I needed to do was figure out how was I going to serve this need, Right. I ended up putting together, this is a, a tactic that I got from the startup that I'm at right now, essentially a founder's memo. And the founder's memo is really just like, almost like think of it as like, as a product person, like your, even you can, you, you can apply it to product management. Like it's your, it's, it's your pitch. It's your, what is the product? It's almost like the, the deck that I shared with you before, right? Like this, um, you know, it's like, what do we do? What's our vision? Like it, but it's, it's in a just word document. I didn't want to, I didn't want to create beautiful decks. So I was like, I, I needed to do this for Disney. I don't need to do that for the startup. So I put together this founder's memo and the founder's memo shows essentially main thing and answers questions. Like, you know, I had to come up with a name and I came up with that eventually. But then like, you know, what's the purpose? Who are our customers? What problems do we tackle? Right. What solution do we provide? What are our values? What's our business model, right? These are essentially, these are the questions that you need to answer and when kind of coming up with a company or a business. And, you know, there's, I was learning a lot about affiliate marketing. I, I read about it and I thought, well, that's a good way to start. Affiliate marketing commission. That's how I can get my, my um, I see some chats coming in here. Working backwards, press release used by Amazon. I'm not, I'm not familiar with that, David. What is that? Working backwards. Looks like a vision board. Quora, what is Amazon's approach to product development? Okay, I'm not sure if David's still on, but um, basically, yes. Yeah, so I came up with my business model and I figured, okay, affiliate marketing, that's where I'll start. And then eventually I actually do want to uh, create a product or a platform where I could, uh, you know, get more products to be on this, on this, on this platform, on this experience. So, you know, I ended up using WordPress as my main technology for this. Um, <clears throat> and ultimately, you know, just decided to start off with like basic, you know, creating articles for people that want to travel with their pets, but don't know like the right type of product to choose, right. For that specific read. So here, for example, let me go to another one that's better. Um, what I, what I first, I, I created, it was, was like just an article, right? One article, probably very little images, put it out there, published, you know, and I was relying heavily on Google, on search, Google search or search SEO. And I got some traffic after some time. But what I realized was that it really, really became much more apparent that when you have visuals, again, going back to like me and dyslexia and, and visual, like I think visuals, I mean, for anyone really, just more powerful, it speaks more. But the moment that I, so I, before I just had like text and I, you know, described like why, like what are the best thing, what are the best things about this product or whatever. The moment that I put these visuals to show other dog owners of that same breed wearing that, you know, using that product, conversions went up. 
right? And that was my hypothesis is that if I can get other people, if I can get people to, to show and see that, 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 that other people use it and it's specifically for their breed of dog, then it will, it will go up. And so I, I'm, 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 I'm connecting with the people on Instagram and I'm getting their images and, and then sharing them here, right? So, you know, that has become for me a, a source of passive income. Now it's like literally sitting there. I don't, I mean, I haven't touched it in a while. I'm looking for a product manager to help me with this one as well. So if you guys are interested, uh, you know, the opportunity there. But ultimately, you know, a great way to build some passive income by creating content and, and, and affiliate marketing links and everything like that. But that's not where I want to go, right? The, the true area where I want to go with it is to be able to, like my purpose with it, as you can see here, is to make every moment of travel easier and more enjoyable for dogs and dog lovers around the world, right? And the grand vision is to unify dogs and dog lovers around the world so that they can have simplicity and happiness. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of envisioning a future where Fetch the Moment is not just a place for articles of con for products, but it's also almost like, you know, Airbnb offers like experiences, right? With, uh, you know, you can go do an experience and, and things like that. I, I'm thinking a fetch the moment could be a place where you can also, it could be like a platform for people who want to offer experiences that are done with their, their pets, their dogs. Uh, Airbnb actually does have a couple experiences on, on it, on their website today for, for people who want to travel with their dogs or they want to experience stuff with their dogs, but it, it's really, really hard to search, right? Like if I go to Airbnb right now, I type in experiences. I mean, right now it's probably this probably wouldn't work in this pandemic. But um, you know, if you did like a search, it, it might have gotten better. But I don't, I don't think so. Experiences. Let's say dog. Yeah. See, they look for it's based off of location. But let's say you like I'm trying to find you know an opportunity for like let's say you're going to this place and you want an experience, right? Um, so anyway, so I'm thinking like that could be a, a solve as well for people who want to travel to, let's say they want to travel to Vegas and they want to travel with their animal and they want to do stuff with them, but they don't know where or how to do it, right? So that could be the place for Fetch the Moment in the future. So that's where I, you know, I'm looking for a product manager to help actually, because like, you know, the thing is that I think the the platform part definitely requires development, more development work. This was all pretty much, you know, plug and play here's a wordpress theme put it in i mean i'm 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 over you know uh, simplifying it but it's not it's not a true tech solution right a true tech solution is like you know you know something where people can can connect to it right and there's a platform so the, rec the, you know, the advice I give, so I share this, right, because it shows like a little bit of the process of I went from market research to coming up with the founder's memo, becoming very crystal clear on what I want to do and, and how I want to do it to then actually doing it, creating it, and then, you know, seeing the future with it. And, um, you know, I would say that there's a couple things that you have to keep in mind when, when building kind of something on the side. It's obviously just knowing how much time you're committing to it. And, and dedicating time to something like this if you decide that it's part of your your calling right um i haven't put too much uh, uh, you know attention to it because i've been focusing now actually more on on helping you guys and helping more product managers and i definitely still want to see this grow i still love it and i want to it's like almost like a child <laughs> like you want to help it feed it and all that but i just need i need i need a product manager to help me so hopefully that's one of you guys and um, I'll take questions if there's any questions or anyone's still on. Oh, you guys are still on. Okay, I thought you might have left. <laughs> okay, any questions? I'm looking at the chat here. The product, its users, what problem you're solving, how they're currently solving it, how your new customer is better, the thing is more in depth than that. David, are you still on, David? Um, 
Since is David is here, but muted. Yeah, maybe I just I I didn't understand what he was mentioning there, but. How do you focus on problems and general solutions instead of features and in the founder's memo? How do you focus on problems and can you elaborate a little bit more, David, if you're on? If not, then that's fine. I I Yeah, it's so easy to talk about. Oh. And actually the document you've shared is pretty much like the business canvas model or lean canvas or a vision board. So it's generic, like having solutions, problems, yep. target audience and yep. stuff. Very, very similar. And it's, it's honestly, it's the, again, it comes with practice, right? You, if you can look at a product and you can, you can answer all those questions, you're getting there, right? You're getting, you're building that habit. And if you can continue to do that, then you'll be really, really good on a good path. Um, awesome. Well, I'm sensing that we're at a point where I think we can conclude. And again, just want to well, say, well, oh. Yeah, so, yeah, so one, one last question. Yeah. So how much effort do you think one would, one would need to put when starting out a business? Is, is it possible working, doing this alongside a full-time job? It is possible to do it along outside a full-time job. I'm, I'm proof of that for sure. I would say that like also anything, definitely having a plan, having a, the discipline to work on something on the side, even if it's like not, you know, if you're not seeing progress is, is definitely needed, right? I will say this though, when you can connect with other people who are also doing something like this, you definitely get more momentum, right? The, mo the moment that I connected with another, you know, entrepreneur slash like, you know, so someone who's working on, on a side hustle or whatever, I got like very much more invigorated and we kind of worked a little bit closer together and we shared stories. And, and again, when you build a, like a mastermind group of people that are focused on the same type of thing, you, your energy level just, just increases. Right, and you can do more. I think that's that's a true, true belief that I have. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, maybe. I mean, that's that's kind of what I'm thinking. Is like in the future, uh, when all this is done, maybe even putting together like a like a nice like plan. Like, if someone were to like start working on a side business, what would they need to do? What are the steps? Right. And if I gave it to you as a playbook or whatever. Like, would, would you want that, right? Is that something of value? Yep. Cool. Oh my gosh, it's 2.40 a.m. That is crazy. Thank you, Gil, for, <laughs> for, for sticking around that long. I appreciate it, man. Holy crap. Nice to be in the Zoom room. Hope to be connected next time. Yes, happy Easter, guys. Thank you so much. Good night. Take, thank, take thank care. You so much, Rich. I appreciate you guys being here. I will share the video. I will share the love. And then you guys also, please, if you wouldn't mind just sharing with more people, let people know that if they're looking to, if it's career advancement, I mean, I like to focus on product management, but if it's career advancement, need help that they need, then I, I, I love giving that advice as well. Um, as you guys can see, and just want to say thank you again. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Take care of yourself. So rich. Hey, Rich. Yeah. Thank you. So right. that's um, kind of give them some sort of um, feedback um, for the aspiring PMs. I think um, what you can also do is kind of give some, okay, uh, you have to have come up with the idea of a product you want to build, just like some sort of um, impact assessment on you to so <laughs> track how well um, the um, mentoring is going well. Just yeah. some opinion, and I'll be glad to do that because okay. I'm just transitioning from data um, analytics into PM now, and uh, I've had this couple of ideas, and it's just um, become kind of vague on putting it on documents and probably get, uh, taking it up to a prototype or a mock-up. I'd love to do that. That sounds like a great idea, man. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. All right. Have a good day, rest of your day, wherever you are. Thank you again. Take care. Cheers, mate.